Hey, welcome to the Tuesdays show. I'm Ultra David. That's right, get over here. <laughs> get over here. Get over here. <laughs> exactly. I'm James Chen. How's everybody going? This is the Tuesday show. We're going to be talking about various topics tonight. You got these ones up here. The Terminator is in a video game. We'll talk about him. We'll talk about some tournament results. A few things happened over the weekend to get to. Uh, some good matches as well. 5-5 five, five matchup is pretty interesting this week, I would say. Uh, you got the fact that Blizzard uh, died today or whatever, <laughs> and uh, well, there's lots of other FGC news to talk about as well. Yep, and uh, we're going to start with some Mortal Kombat 11. I have not had a chance to mess with the Terminator yet, but apparently you've had lot, plenty of opportunity. I streamed him a couple hours earlier him. today, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he is out if you have the combat pack, so if you right. have the like, thing, you, know, you can play him. Mm -hmm. He's out for everybody else in a week. He's a blast. Um, I'm super happy about Oh, really? Did. Yeah, oh, I gotta okay, tell you, man. Okay, okay. I'm very excited. So, to, to begin with, before we get to the gameplay, the more I hear of his voice acting, the more uh -huh. I think it's actually really good. Okay, okay. <laughs> when I first heard, the first few times that I heard him, like on the reveal trailer, I feel like they picked a line where it doesn't sound that Arnoldy. Huh. But then when I have watched more and more... Like, now you, you can see all the interactions. Or something? Maybe I'm used to it now. I don't know. But I found, I feel like it sounds really good. Okay. okay. So I'm happy about that. Uh, there's all sorts of hilarious references to, like, the movies, you know, not just Terminator. They actually but... had the, the, the Sub-Zero played Zero line. <laughs> they in there. did. But, but he didn't say it. No, he didn't. It was, it was, it was Jackie, Jackie, and I was sad about that. But All of the references like that that I've seen have been that way. Like, there's one where... Uh, I think Aaron Black makes a movie reference. There's one where somebody says that you have to get to the chopper now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cassie says it's that. It's Cassie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they actually did do all these references, which I think is great. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that they that they got those in there. So I think that's really cool. Um, and he looks like a cyborg would look, I feel. Like his, okay. his buttons are like, they're Jason-y. Right, right, yeah. So, a lot of people, from what I had seen, said that he looks very, he feels very Jason. -y. He, he looks and feels pretty Jason. -y. I agree with that, mm -hmm. Jason from MKX. Yeah, but I think that's of, appropriate. Yeah, best of five show. Oh, thanks for the raid, y'all. Yes, I think that's appropriate because both of them. I don't know. I don't know. He's like a cyborg, and right, it's not like right. he's the. He's not T one thousand. Like he's mm -hmm, just the T eight hundred. Like he's not supposed to be super fast. So, I think it's. I think it's really good. What is wrong with Arnold's down three? He has the stanky kick. Oh, does he? He, he has, has Okay, yeah. okay. At least he doesn't do it... It's not from the knee. Like, you can picture, like, Katana and yeah, Cole from last yeah, game. Yeah, where yeah, they're yeah. just... They're, literally, their knee is doing this. Right, it's just a rotation, yeah. and that's it. This yeah, one, yeah. his whole leg goes up, so it's like... He, like, he kind of bends back, and his leg goes up. It is the stanky leg, but it's... MK11's like slightly upgraded version of right, what a yeah, yeah, like yeah. looks like. But I mean, people are saying that it's also a super good anti-air. Oh, okay. I haven't I haven't gotten that deep into it yet. Um, that makes total <laughs> sense to me. It looks like it would be good now that oh, I think about no. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Anyway, he's got snanky like um, his he's he is a close range brawler for the most part. Okay. Okay. So he has a shotgun, but it's super slow startup. Gotcha. Instead, he's more about like. The command grab mix-ups, the fact that he can get in very easily. I feel like he moves He moves really well for the kind of character that he is. Okay. And that's not to say, like, he has... Not, like, because he it was walking terribly fast, but, like, he in Variation 1... By the way, I'm going to be calling these Terminator 1, Terminator 2, and Terminator 3. The variations. So, okay. in, so in Terminator 1, he has, um, like, a, like, a big hop, and it, uh -huh. like, it's safe on block. Oh, okay. From, okay. It, from anywhere, basically. Literally almost Is it full an screen. overhead? Or no? It is an overhead as well. So it's like Baraka, basically. It's like, what if Baraka's was full screen? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's kind of like Shao Kahn's thing. Same sort of idea. Okay, okay. But yeah, it's safe. And he has high low mix ups involved with that because he has some strings that are lows oh, and whatnot. Okay, okay. But yeah, he can just. He's, he gets in and he can. Sort of mix up from there. I mean, you know, he's not frame advantage, but like he right, can, yeah, he yeah, can yeah, play yeah. games mm -hmm. as you can. And it's just MK11. a good way to get in. You get in, yeah, right? Yeah. Use use it to mix up. Uh, he has a command grab in all variations. So other, as opposed to like Gears, where that changes. Every, everybody else, yeah, that changes. Yeah, 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 yeah. For him, it's in every variation, uh, which you know I'm very happy about. Um, in Terminator Two, in he has Day. a run. Yeah, in Judgment Day, he has a run. 
Um, and is that, that what we saw in the trailer uh-huh, where he runs? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, it's back forward, okay, forward okay. run. Okay. And out so of it that, wasn't actually a dash; it was a command. It's a command run. Oh, it's a command run. Okay. Okay. So out of that, you can do a mid throw. So you can't duck it. It's oh, a mid dang. throw. Okay. Uh, and it, the range on that is like half screen. It's Baraka. So you've picked it. Yes, this is my variation. <laughs> <laughs> that is your variation. Is, I'm playing. I'm playing Terminator too. He has that, and out of it, he also has a mid kick and a high launcher uh-huh. pop up. Um, and what's wild is that from most of his important buttons, those are true block strings. Like you can't flawless block in between. You can't do like. Back one, run, oh, kick, yeah, and false yeah, block. Yeah, I thought for sure okay. you'd be able to, but you cannot. Right, right. So that means that it's like a true mix-up into that stuff or the mid-command grab. Super good. And it's all safe. Like, the all the, the kick is safe, the really? launcher is safe. Really? Jesus, safe. okay. Um, <laughs> and um, in that variation as well, he has a command grab that has... You can do it forward, and you can do it backwards. And if you do the regular version, the forward version, the forward enhanced amplified version... And then also, after that, the regular amplified version, it's mm-hmm. a crushing blow, and you get a full pop-up. And people are already doing, like, 400 damage plus combos with that stuff. So, Jeez, okay, uh, okay. And And especially because you can juggle into command grabs, right? So you can... Mm, you are, you're yeah, doing yeah, a juggle yeah. into this command grab. That's, what, that's how you're setting it up in the uh-huh, first place. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then either mix-up or c- uh, combo pop-up into it for, like, a billion damage, right? right? So does he feel super good right now? He's super is it is it is it is it might be a situation where NRS DLC character too strong? I, you know, it's hard for me to say that so fast, but he does have a lot of stuff going for him. Um, he has it's he's not a good footsies character, right? He uh, needs to be a little closer than that. But he does have ways in, especially with run. Run is oppressive, right? For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, he doesn't have zoning, but he has great like. You can't really zone him because he has a move where he turns around and he shows his back to you, and that is invincible to projectiles. Okay. So okay. it's not even a counter or a reflect or whatever. It's just you can't hit him with a projectile during that right. time. So he's going to be able to get into a range where he can oppress you really fast, I feel. I think he's yeah. super good at doing that. Okay. I mean, some people in the chat are saying that he's, like, ridiculously good. <laughs> He might be ridiculously good. I just, <laughs> I just, I have played with him for like two hours and only right, in training yeah, mode, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I don't want to like go on the record with him yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, okay, that's fair. But that's I think fair. that there is a distinct chance that he could be ridiculously good, like predator alien status, or maybe I, not quite that. I don't, I don't think he's Tanya. I don't think he's alien. But is he Gears? Sonic Fox has figured out you could instant jump the air command grab, so like maybe Tiger Neat or something like that. Yeah, I think that's. I don't know. I don't okay. think that was like something he needed to figure out. <laughs> but um, Terminator Three is really wild um, and he, pretty bad too. I mean, so it's just the, it's, I, I kind of hope that this variation ends up sucking. So that will okay, be okay, okay. So the joke that will be, be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. He has instead of the shotgun, he has back forward one, and if it touches you, if you get hit by it, or if you block it, uh-huh. it's unblockable. You cannot use your meter. Defensive or offensive Whoa. for like ten seconds. What does he do? He just like tosses a grenade on you, uh-huh. and then you like start glowing, and that glow, yeah, means that you can't use any meter. So that means not just amplified specials, but like wake up wake roll, up ro- wake yeah, up yeah. attack, uh-huh, uh-huh. break away, anything. Yeah, or even uh, flawless block up. Flawless v. block up two or three. Yeah, uh-huh. none of that stuff. It is locked out for quite a while. Huh. So that's that's good. But he doesn't have the normal. Um, he doesn't have the normal uh, shotgun, so he doesn't have like this zoning, okay, okay. whatever zoning is, whatever. Um, he also has a a grenade that is sort of like a timed pop up. So it's a mid, okay. it's not a low, but it's on the ground, and it will sit there for a few seconds, and then it'll explode. Right, right, so right. I have I didn't spend enough time to look for it, but presumably there are setups where like that's meaty, right? And then yeah. you get to you know of put course, your, your mix ups or whatever. Maybe you can make it safe. We'll see what ends up coming out with that. That's that one. That variation is going to take a little bit more time to figure out. It's not like instantly obviously good in the way that I think Terminator Two and Terminator One are obviously. Mm-hmm. You just look at them for ten seconds and they're like, "Yeah, this is good." Mm-hmm. Um, he has a six frame down one like Gears, so he's oh, really? one of I think only three characters in the game who have Dang. that. They just gave him like a lot of stuff. Is it? I, I wonder if this is like a 
you know, we gotta sell the movie kind of thing. I or, really don't you know. know. <laughs> like make him buff so everyone's like, God, he's so strong, and yeah. let's go see the movie. Dude, maybe. I, I mean, <laughs> again, I don't think that this is a case of like a Tanya. You're not gonna see six of them in top eight. Like, okay. I don't think it's like that. But I, I, I'm getting the same vibes that I got when I first played Gyrus, which is like. This character is right. obviously yeah. strong. Mm -hmm. And maybe not too good, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't know what the weakness is, right? I mean, his... It's okay, so he can't zone, he doesn't play footsie straight. Yeah, but, but I mean, like, the, the zoning If you're just is, in there, it's like... <laughs> there's not a lot of zoning in the game to begin with, right? Except with some of these new variations. I mean, while I think it's true that the game's zoning is not as strong as some other stuff... There are lots of people who think that like Cetrion's the best character in the game, oh, and okay, other characters okay. very, like Johnny's maybe the best best character in the game now because of zoning. So zoning is there; it definitely exists. Right, uh -huh. but I feel like he'll just like turn his back to the little. <laughs> like, and he doesn't even take chip you know, damage. It's nothing invincible to project us. Oh, yeah, jeez, doesn't okay. even worry about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How much uh, recovery is on that thing? Not much, and. You can hold it for up to like a few seconds if you okay, want. Okay. So it's there's a long window. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I haven't played him online against anybody yet. I only took yeah, him to training. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so you know, uh, zoning is a lot of zoning isn't projectiles. Can he zone like some all of Cetrion's lightnings and rocks and all that stuff? Uh, like those that? are projectiles, but the. The little, like, geyser is not a projectile, okay, so that yeah, wouldn't work. Yeah, okay, okay, um, okay. Scarlet's tongue is not a projectile, so mm -hmm. that wouldn't work. So there are a few things, but, you know, it's, like, mostly projectiles, okay, for sure. Okay, Gotcha. Maybe, maybe, uh, noob, uh, They say clones. it works on Cetrion geyser. It works on geyser? None of, nothing else ketchup, works on geyser. Ketchup <laughs> tested it on stream, apparently, so. What? Did something change about Geyser? <laughs> or they just made it so that Terminator is Terminator and he's special. Maybe they did. I am i don't know what to make of that. It shouldn't work unless they change something. Or unless, yeah, maybe he's just a uh, robot so you can't stop him. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of that. Um, um, but, like, for example, there's no Reflect available for um, Nightwolf. What do you mean? Like, Nightwolf cannot reflect Geyser. Oh, it's right, not, yeah, because right. yeah, there's nothing to reflect, right? So Yeah, but I guess oh. I guess maybe I assumed that that was because it was not a projectile, but maybe uh. there's just... What happens when Cetrion shoots a lightning reflect? into the reflect? I think it just goes back. Now, I, I don't remember which one is which, but that and some of the other ones that um, are from the sky, uh -huh. some of them reflect down and some of them reflect up, and I don't remember oh, which one is okay, which offhand, okay. to be honest. Weird. But, okay. Yeah, it seems like a character-specific thing. Hmm. Anyway, I think he's super cool. Obviously, I have to use Terminator 2. <laughs> it's the best variation for me, for what I want to do. Is it the best variation? I don't even know, but it's, it's like so in, in my wheelhouse. He's got to run, it's so he's got a mid-throw. He's yes. got to run mid-throw with a safe kick. Yes. Now, how, like, and then you said he has a punch follow-up to that? Yes, and that launches, and in the corner you can get pretty easy combos. Right, so what's the startup on the three different moves? Is it fuzzyable, you know, is there... Is no, there... I, try, I tried to get around it in some way, and I couldn't figure it out. I don't Jeez. think there's any way to do that. So if he cancels into run, does he keep running into you? So can you run a little extra length so that you can grab him, and they're out of blocks? Totally, totally. Jesus. Totally, yes. Uh, he also, his back one is a is a launcher. It always pops up, uh -huh, uh -huh. and it's cancelable too. So you can do back one into run, into run cancel, and then you have plenty of time to continue with juggle as they're popped up. Does the cancel cost meter? One defensive bar. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to one say. One defensive bar. But, you know, this is like, I didn't spend much time on it, but there are obviously combos out of that. Right, that are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna uh -huh, be, if nothing uh -huh. else, a few hundred damage. Okay. I think he's really good and really fun, and he's definitely right up my alley. What what I think is cool too is that this variation I'm going to be playing primarily for the mix-ups and for the like sort of movement of it. But if you're somebody who loves the combos and the execution, I feel like the run canceling is going to mm -hmm. probably okay. offer a lot okay. of that stuff for you as well. Oh, I don't know like, that I'll maximize like, that stuff, but other sounds people like, might. Sounds like the second variation is the one to go to for now. I, so. that's, personally, that's my feeling. Yeah. But it, we'll I see. mean, when's the first tournament with him? Um, in one month. Will it be Judgment Day? <gasps> <gasps> wow. And in one hour here, 
It's literally the day of judgment. <laughs> the, day, the day of atonement slash judgment. Yom Kippur. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually great. Oh, man. Oh, man. I was like, A wait. Jewish holiday starts tonight. Yeah, yeah. I was, you were like, in an hour. I was like, what the hell's happening in an hour? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Man, that actually... Is that on purpose? Because oh. there's a lot of other references in the game to, like... Hebrew texts and Jewish lore. Really? Yeah, like Baraka, uh, Barak was like a, a military leader in the uh, Torah, uh-huh. and Devora was a, somebody in the Torah who actually commanded Barak, I think, to attack somewhere or whatever. What the like, there's heck? there's actually like a lot of secret. <laughs> there's a lot of like, uh-huh. secret lore that's related to uh, Hebrew so, texts. So you think they released? <laughs> Terminator the Judgment Day on... On Yom Kippur! That's officially canon now. Nailed it! That's officially Ultra Chen TV canon Nailed it! Officially canon. Makes sense to me. (laughs) Anyway, I'm really excited for him. I'm looking forward to playing him more. I'm not sure which other one I'm going to drop. Like, I really want to keep playing Baraka Command Girl. And I really want to keep playing Nightwolf uh, Lightning Arrow. Would I drop the Gearus variation three? Maybe, maybe. So you're you're even trying to limit it to the number of characters that you're trying to learn. Yeah, uh, I just don't have enough time or effort yeah, to yeah, yeah. learn a ton. But absolutely, yeah, a few. Yeah, that's. I mean, games, characters, yeah. you know, it's everything. Just, it's the time just investment. Have I don't have an infinite Gah. of that. Whew. Anyway, he's out. Give him a look if you're interested. He, I definitely think is good. I won't commit to him being the best, but. Maybe by this time next week, that's when you get it and all different answers. Well, I mean, so so far, judging from what we were talking about, the variations last yeah. week, how much of it has really kind of, you know, come to fruition? Is Johnny clearly with the arc fireballs really, really good? Yeah, definitely one of the best, okay, for sure, okay. for sure. So he went from being one of the best to now potentially even being more one of the best. Some people think he's the best. Right. Some people say okay. number one. A lot of people would say top two or three right now. Um, but you know, a lot of that other stuff I think is going to take it some time. Like some people thought that Cassie's new variation was complete garbo, uh-huh. but then a few days later I saw some tweets that were like, maybe I should rethink this. <laughs> okay, we'll okay, see. yeah, yeah, so, see, I was wondering, was there any variations that yeah, surprised we'll anybody yet? We'll see, we'll okay, see. Okay, okay, that's so still, still, early days still well. undefined. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Fair Good time for the game though. Cool, cool. Collector is not trash. I can't tell you. I think he's one of the best, but he's not. But the not patch trash. actually already made him not trash, right? The yeah, previous... he was already better. Right, he was right. Already better. It's not variation three that made him better. That's probably safe to say. Yeah. And did he get any buffs this that patch too that dropped so. the variations? Okay, I don't think so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people are still complaining that the third variation got nerfed. It definitely got nerfed. <laughs> that bowl, uh, the uh, chakram is way right, worse than it was before right. for sure. Okay. Anyway, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Well, uh, excited to start off with that. That's cool. Want to go on to some results here? Sure. Actually, I should probably put a slash etc. here because there was definitely more. I did notice a flaw in my new font here. That oh yeah. The Terminator thoughts. You can see it, the G is cut off down here. So things that dun, go dun, dun. under the line now it looks like it says thou out. Yep, thouts. Thouts. Mm, Thanks for the sub, Toxic NH. Oh, thank uh, you. By the way, I'm going to be wolfing down this chocolate vodka. Because, again, Yom Kippur starts in like an hour and I'm supposed to fast for that, so. How long do you have to fast for? Until sundown the next day. Mm, okay, so you have to not eat something for 24 hours, basically. Yeah. Or okay. drink. Or drink. Oh, so you can't eat or drink anything. Negative. Dang. It's a babka, don't y'all know? Come on. Come on. Babka. What is a babka? What is it? I don't know. It's like chocolate bread cake or something? No. Okay. Okay. Pretty good, though. So you can't even drink water, huh? No water. Nothing. Dang. That's crazy. But I'm sure you've done it many years now, and it hasn't been hard, yeah. right? So. I mean, you know, it's not, not that big of a deal. Okay. There's always, like, a couple hours there in, like, early afternoon the next day where you're starting to, like, get a little antsy, but then... At the same time, right before breaking the fast, I always feel like, actually, it was no big deal. Okay. So, we'll see. So, does your wife spend all that time eating delicious cakes and going, mmm, <laughs> David, mm, Right, yum. yeah, I know. <laughs> frying up bacon or something. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All righty. Uh, Ultimate Fighting Arena. Let's talk a little bit about this. This took place in James. Give me the name of this city in France. Uh, Aubervilliers. Genius. And <laughs> you pronounce it Aubervilliers. Okay. And in this, there was a bunch of stuff. It was yes. DBFZ Tenkaichi event. It was CPT ranking. It was MK11 Intercontinental Combat. Yeah, it was a big event. It was a big event. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it was stacked for like everything. And you know what's funny is that the game that had the most entrance was Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Really? Yeah. Oh, good job to them, dude. Absolutely. It was won by MK Leo. Oh, dang. He actually went all the way out there, huh? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Okay. Interesting, because Big House was also this weekend, so I don't know what the deal was, but that's hmm. cool. Uh, Glutton, you got second with Wario. Then in DBFZ, this was big. Uh, Wawa won it. So yeah. he's a like local... Well, I don't know where he lives. He's always France, been one of the, like, a really strong French player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So he's a French player mm -hmm. who wins the French event, which is mm -hmm. huge. At this event was also Kane. Shanks was there, another strong European player. Uh, Assassin. But then... Tachikawa and Sonic Fox both got fifth. I mean, those are those are dudes who travel and like always do well. Obviously, right, boxes, yeah, and especially. win all the time. So. Uh, and then instead, it was Wawa, Kane, Shanks. So shout outs to Europe. Yeah, good job. Super to cool. Them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know. At that time, Logan was like, "Yeah, UK, UK," and then Street Fighter. So. You know. <laughs> oh dang! Speaking of Street Fighter V, what happened? Winner was Reciprocity Punk with Karen. USA! <laughs> oh, USA! Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, no, su super cool about DBSC that the Grand Finals was all France. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. Top three was absolutely. all Europe. I yeah, think that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, might have been top four, was it? What did I say here? You always want yeah, people to awesome. uh, defend their turf. For sure, like for that. sure. You always want that. That's what, that's what we always root for, even if it's yeah. rooting against like one of our friends or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, well, I or, hope the local or, people or do well. Or just even, like, maybe even kind of like the, like, you know, obviously Arslan Ash coming out, Pakistan. Oh, yeah, like, enough. you just want him to Some win. Some story yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an uh -huh, exception. Uh -huh. You're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takamura got second, so somebody from Europe at yeah. least did well right there. Phenom Always third. a super strong Akuma. I feel like yes. Takamura is just basically... He ascended. He is waiting to become, like, to just to break into that Problem X tier right now. I think just, that's probably true. Yeah. yeah. yeah I yeah. think he's just right there. I think he's right I think there. he's right there. It, there's just... Something's going to click. He's going to win some super big thing, mm -hmm. and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden, it's just going to click for He's him. definitely going to win a major. Like, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I agree, mm -hmm, for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Phenom, then Hurricane. Luffy got fifth. TKR also... Uh, Verdwayance got 7th with Blanca, which is awesome. That's cool. Nice. I think that character's underrated, IMO. But whatever. Dude, Problem I, X I, got 7th as well. It's it, like That's that's going to be our commentary every time we do anything for Street Fighter. I think this character's underrated. I, but Blanca, I, that, I think, is mega legit. Yeah, personally. I mean, I think he is. I think like, I still think Fong is underrated. I think Cody's underrated. I agree with that. Know, you know, there's a lot of characters that are so much Speaking stronger. of Fang, Vega Patch got ninth with Fang. Yeah, see, there you go. Was there any other U.S. players there besides Punk? I don't see any U.S. player names. I think you're right. He's the only one that went out there. At least in his top 25, yeah. So in other words, all the U.S. players that went out there finished at the top. Ha wow. ha! Look at that, 100% success? 100% wow. they took the top spots, dude. God. Wow. Oh, Sonic Fox went, but he didn't We're play talking Street about Street Fighter. Fighter. We're okay. talking about Street Fighter, yeah, exactly. Second seven, Tishuman won it. That's cool. Of course, living That's in Europe cool. with Master Raven. Super he lives cool. in Italy. I, I, I believe so. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Kakoma got second, then Kuiper, then Gunny, then Jopolix and Asim, and Fergus and Fireblade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. I mean, beating Kakoma is not a, not a small thing. Oh yeah, so, that's yeah. big. That's really really good. Nice work. Wait, was Smug there, or was he eliminated early? Oh, I did hear that, that Smug went. You're absolutely right. Thanks for reminding me. Oh. Yeah, Smug apparently lost in pools. And I don't remember if he was eliminated in pools, but he definitely lost in okay, pools. Okay, okay, okay. And was out, you know, like I said, top 25, he wasn't in there. So, okay, so yeah, it was an early out. If he out didn't make it out of pools, then 100% of the Americans who made it out of pools Dang. fit the top. Oh, 100%! USA, oh. USA. I was kidding. <laughs> some USA government logic here right now. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Cooking the books a little bit. 
Yeah. Mm. MK11 was owned by Video Games Yo with Shao Kahn and Nightwolf. A lot of that was Nightwolf. Nice. Did, did he name himself after like being a Maximilian fan? I actually don't know the story behind yeah, that. I yeah, I know. <laughs> Every time I see it, I'm like, wait, Maximilian? Oh, I know, oh, yeah, I, know. Yeah, yeah. I know. I don't know what the story is. Uh, uh, but he, he basically came out of nowhere. He's one of these dudes who's been playing online, and then he finally went to an offline event, and he was the number one ranked Shao online. And that first time, I think he might have gotten top eight, or he was just outside of it. And then after that, he got top eight. And then after that, he got top four. And uh-huh. after that, he got grand finals. And now he won. It's just yeah, like a very fast uh-huh. progression. It's just one of those situations. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is super good. Super good. That's awesome. Oh, he's the European ninja killer is what they call him. So, I, could, uh, I could see that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I certainly get the comparison yeah, coming ninja from primarily off, off online. Thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Man, I was... Okay, I'm not gonna... I was gonna make a bad joke. Anyways, I'm not gonna say it. Dizzy TT got second, so basically the UK took over. Uh, then Krathen, then Irish Mantis, mm-hmm. then Zoro, and the reverse from Saudi Arabia. Nice work. Oh, nice. Then Fasol and Shark Teeth, also from Saudi. So they have U, EU and uh, Middle East up there, which makes sense. Samurai Shodown was won by Score. Nice. Palomaru. Wow. T- can you tell me the results? Score, Halamaru, second, Benji Buckley, Yashamaru, third, Frianel, Yashamaru, fourth, Instinct, Yashamaru. What's going on, James? That's interesting. That is actually interesting to me because not nobody lists Yashamaru as, as like a top tier, but obviously he has the amazing movement. So I yeah. don't know. Maybe Europe is just Yash, Yashamaru like land of craziness. Yeah, it's also weird because in the game they do say Yashamaru. Yeah, which it's not supposed. It's to not be. supposed to be. It's oh, not okay. supposed because I was saying that too. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, Yashamaru, and people were like, no, it's actually Yashamaru, but they but just the game, like, the game just messed up or something. I don't know. It's, it's a weird. Japanese game. Yeah, I know. Japanese it's people, weird. So. I don't understand it, but that's I what. I mean, Corey Bell was one of the people who told me this, who yeah. speaks Japanese. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, so it was yeah. very weird. But Yashamaru is uh, apparently. Doing well over there. So, because I mean, Charlotte, Ukyo, there's only a one Jubei in top eight. Oh, and yeah. he got seventh place. And Jubei is the character right now that everybody's talking about okay. as the best character in the oh, game. Okay. So, wow. that's interesting. It does, okay. Is Darley ass still? Because somebody got she, seventh with Darley. She's medium. Vicks. She she went from low tier to now like mid, high mid kind okay. of thing. She's competitive enough. Okay. She still has a couple of problems here and there, but for the most part, she can compete. Interesting. Yeah. Caliber but, six. Uh, to be honest with you, the game is really well balanced right now. Nice. It's actually in a really good situation. I think the worst character might be like uh, Rimuru and uh, and Wu still, unfortunately. I see. <laughs> Wu yeah. just they tried to buffer, but they're so scared. They're scared. They're Absolutely. scared. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Crispy loves you. So at one point, I was saying Yashimaru because the the accent is almost always on the first syllable in Japanese. So that's how I was saying it. But then I kept hearing it in the game as Yashimaru. So I was like, oh, okay, this must be one of those exceptions. And then people were like, no, they they they're not sure why it was pronounced that way in game and stuff. It's weird. Okay. Yeah. Yes, this Karen shirt is um, what do you guys from see? Fighters Fest. This is oh, actually that is one cool, of their actually, shirts. Yeah. They actually gave me a hoodie. They had a Karen. They had a Bowser. They had uh, one of the MK characters. I think it might have been Scorpion or something okay. like that. And then they had a um, what was the last game? A Dragon Ball character. And on the hoodie, it's all four of them in the back, like this in this kind of line, this orange line, neon kind of look to it. I like so, it. It's sick. I, I think really it looks really like cool. It. I actually really like it. So yeah. Also, shout out to Top Tier Yeah, Check yeah. Uh huh. I didn't even know they had shirts. <laughs> yeah, Henry came up and gave me a shirt at Evo. Oh, really? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Dang. Where was my shirt, Henry? I saw you. Did not. You handed me stickers. Wow. You didn't hand me a shirt. He gave you one of their last shirts. You took my shirt. <laughs> it's, it's a large, which I usually want medium, but, right, you know, right, it's all right. I'll it's take all right. the large. <laughs> It's getting better though. I can think I can fit in mediums now, you probably which can. is probably good. So, yeah. Soul Caliber Six was won by Pulsar Nubicide, and Skill got second. Uh, was uh, as well than Mitsurugi. Okay. Whatever. Okay. No, I was wondering if um. Oh, I see Kayane in there. Kayane got fifth. Keeve is there. Oh, okay. Keeve okay. got fourth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Was, I mean, that's a that's tough. that's the home yeah, of Caliber, yeah, yeah. right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Exactly. France. Um. Under Night and Birth the X8 latest won by Nephros with Seth. 60 Mixty, Hilda got second. Rev 2 won by None of 2 with Dizzy. Then Baco Axel. Dizzy. Dang, Dizzy and Whoa. Axel. Shut up. DOA 6 was won by Excalibur Blades. Alright. 
traveling mm-hmm. around a little bit. Oh, yeah, because uh, that was a DOA event. Yes. Oh, I'm not sure that I mentioned that at the start, but yeah, it was a DOA event mm-hmm. as well as part of the world championship for them. It was also, I should have mentioned this, an SNK world championship qualifier for both Sam Show oh, and KOF 14. that's right. Okay, okay, okay. Nice, nice, nice. So, so K- Caliber Blades won the DO, uh, DOA 6. KOF was won by Score. Who is who was playing Choi, Shune, and Mature? Who, White Ashrax got second. Who was the one who won Samurai Showdown again? Sam Show. Was. Uh, the Pulsa. Pulsa score? Wow. Oh, yeah, you're right. Dang. Oh, dang. Shots you took the, both of this them. This fella score taking both of those. Okay. Score! Score! There you go. Nice work out there. Appropriate name. It was. A lot of. I, I thought it was a beautiful event to watch. I, uh, I did watch the Street Fighter stuff mostly, and I thought that the. Production was really nice. Okay, okay. They had a nice looking stage. Before the Street Fighter Top 8, they had a round table of three people uh, talking about the matchups to yeah. be expected and stuff. It was like a good 10 minutes they've where they were chatting to about do, it. They've always tried to do I really like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've wanted to do that forever. Every time yes. we're about to start like a Top 8 stream, we're like, start us early. Yes. Like, just come up. Like, yes. if, when there's a delay, we're like, we can talk forever. We would love about, to, actually. Yeah. yeah, we want to analyze everything. 100%, yeah. dude. Uh-huh. And uh, I mean, I understand why they don't do that too often because time constraints sure. and everything. Because you're trying to run as many things as possible. Obviously, if you have something like Capcom Cup where it's just focused on one thing, then you do have the analyst table because right. they literally was the analyst table yeah. there. So yeah, I'd love to see that more often. But again, you know, it, it's it's really awesome to see a lot of people in chat. Like uh, Mayor of Moron Mountain, actually, <laughs> genius. Mayor of Moron Mountain. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, said production was excellent and yeah, stuff it like was. that. And it's really awesome because um, the production is going up everywhere. It is. You know, I mean, like I said, I just came from Fighting Fest and I was really happy with the production. They there. did a great job, yeah. You know, and so it's just like, it's really the cool to see a lot of these groups step up and really try to do this. And the thing about it is, it's still largely, at least in the FTC, very grassroots ish. Oh, yeah. Right? And we'll get into that a little bit yeah. more later on, obviously. So. There you go. All right, UFA. There was also Furia Tika, which was in Costa Rica, and this was a ranking event on the CPT as well mm-hmm. for Street Fighter V. A bunch of other games, too. Street Fighter V was won by DR Mandrake. Yeah, so... Woo, boy, he stepped it up. All right, this man. We were talking about Takamura flipping a switch, mm-hmm. figuring it out. So like, Mandrake, literally last week... He beat Doom Snake to get into top eight, got the third place, and he it was the best I had ever seen him play. And I was like, whoa, something clicked for him. And Mena RD was like, man, this guy would win way more events if he just stopped dropping combos and mm. stuff like that. You know? And then this next week, he beat Doom Snake, I think, to get in the top eight again or something. Or did Doom Snake make top eight? No, he did make top he eight. He was fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but Mandrake beat Doomsnake again in a nail biter and then ended up winning the whole tournament. And Mena RD was in this tournament, by the way. Yeah, he was in Grand Finals. Oh, Mena RD got to second place. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mandrake beat him. Mm-hmm. So, wow. Something clicked. And remember how I said Takamura needs to just win an event and stuff clicks. I really feel like that was Mandrake, not, not not this week, but last week when he got that third place because, like I said, he made an 0-2 comeback against Crossover, and then he right. swept, like, two people, and something just clicked, and I don't know. It was really it was really cool to see. Awesome. And here you go. And that's what it takes for a lot of players. Every time we talk about players who are, like, on the cusp yeah. or da-da-da-da, it's always about that. It's just that one event all of a sudden where they either win or just do extremely crazy well right. and then just something in their heads like I am one of these guys right right, right I right, am right. one of these guys yeah and then you just start beating him yeah. like he just beat Punk because remember he went up he didn't lose any games he went 0-2 I'm sorry not Punk no. Men RD he went up 0-2 against Men RD and then Men RD came back three in a row to beat him at Furiatika so he at, probably uh, had Fighter that Fest. Fighter Fest it's all good. I know what you're talking yeah, about. I, I I joked at one point in time at uh, Fighting Fest. My my new handle has been changed to JC Nile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. I like it. That's a good one. JC Nile. That's a good there one right go. there. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Nice so, work. Yeah. Uh, that's good, that's going to be my rapper name. <laughs> I, I think it's a good one. I got to tell you. JC Nile. 
Andrake beat Doomsnake. He then beat Justin Wong in winners finals 3-0. I didn't get a chance to see that. And then he beat Mena in grand finals. Because Justin Wong used nothing but poison I the believe whole only entire poison. time. So I actually really want to see that. I actually really, really want to see that. Mono got seventh <laughs> with Fang. Good Kava job. Seven. Good job. All right. Justin won Sam Show with Tam Tam. And that was a qualifier, too. Was it? I think so, because he won one of those swords. There's that picture of him with the sword. I don't think so. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's not listed here. He definitely won a sword. Okay. A fancy little sword. Okay. Someone in the chat can, uh, if anybody in the chat can verify if Furia Tico was an official uh, Samurai Showdown qualifier. I'm looking it up, buddy. Okay. It was, says Ace King Offsuit. You can't get more reliable information than that. You got it there. So Ace shout King out to Justin offsuit. for being a qualifier. Hey, you. That is, and that, that's the same for KOF 14, presumably, as well, right? Yeah, most likely. In which that. case, then TXC Violent Kane. Okay, qualified. okay. Yeah, Violent Kane's very good. So. Yep. Okay. No, you can't get more reliable info than Ace King yeah, Offsuit. Yeah, I'll take it, buddy. I'll, I'm, I'll I, take it. Even if there is, I don't I don't believe it anyway. Colotro so. won Tekken 7. Okay. All right. Let's move on to Electric Cancel. <clears throat> this was the only event that I managed to see this weekend. Okay. So I was, I was uh, out of town for almost the whole right, time. But that's right. Electric Cancel was a and Tekken you, tournament. I did see that you went to Dallas. I did go to and Dallas. And you, you did confirm that Butterburger is really bad, right? Whataburger is basically Burger King. Ooh, oh, that's low, dude. <laughs> I really thought it was not good. <laughs> I was, like, disappointed, yeah, to be honest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't have any... My my only, like, thought going into it was that I hoped it was good. It wasn't like yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm from Internet land. This is going to be terrible. Like, right, I wasn't yeah, yeah, in that yeah, mindset. Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh-huh. I hope it's good. And by the way, I had had, like, three or four ciders. So I was in maximum... If anything is going to taste good, it's when you're a little, a little drunk. Right, not, yeah, you're not yeah, wasting, yeah, you're like a little drunk. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's going to taste good. And it was not good. Mm-hmm. Not okay. Is it I wouldn't burger, have it again. Not a burger? I mean, what it was. It was a burger, but it I was mean, it's a... Just like, there's so many names that you could give it, so, you know. Yeah. Oh, anyway. I was very disappointed. All right. <laughs> Electric Cancel. It was a challenge event on the Tekken World Tour, mm-hmm. and it was in SoCal here. JDCR, SoCal resident, took it with Dragonov mm-hmm. and Heihachi. Mm-hmm. Yes, very good grand finals. Jimmy J. Tran, second place with yeah. Brian. Yeah, Jimmy J. Tran is kind of ridiculous. He's, he's, he's pretty good. He's yeah. pretty good. It was fun to watch. So, uh, just really cool to see, because this is an old school event. Right, right. So right. during some of the breaks... They actually had footage from the original, like, few electric cancels. Okay. They were showing, like, Tekken Tag 1 tournament footage. Okay. I don't even know where they got it from, but, like, because <laughs> it was... Probably Jimmy, right? Yeah, I, mean, I know. It was just in box format, and they, they must have re-encoded it just to be able to sure. play it on stream. God, Tekken 3... Tekken... I will tell you this. I still believe this. I really do think Tekken was pretty ugly up until about 6. Absolutely right. Right. It wasn't until like 6 or Tag 2 until Tekken started becoming a pretty game. Absolutely right. Because Tekken Tag is just like... Like if you you look back at it, all games that are polygons look bad. Mm -hmm, Like mm -hmm. they just have not survived well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But on top of that, in the moment, in the arcades... I remember thinking it didn't look nice. Right. Uh-huh. And my friend, many, many of my friends agreed. I when I back then, I always thought Virtua Fighter was a far superior looking game than than. I thought neither one was particularly okay, nice. But... Okay. I always thought Virtua Fighter looked way better, even with as polygonally as yeah. it was. But you know, if I go back and watch VF3, I'm sure it'll look pretty ugly again. So, pretty but ugly. like, it's funny because like then when they switched from that and then went back to the matches, you see yeah. Tekken Seven, you're just like. Gorgeous. Oh my God. Gorgeous. They, what a game. Because like, a lot of the people are still doing the same moves, right. right? But they just touched up all the animation so they don't hit stops. Because, like, you know, when Julia's doing the elbow, it's just, boink, and she freezes, boink, and freeze, she freezes. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, there's like little subtle, like, they just, mm-hmm. oh, they just great. made it look so good. You it's want to hear Andy scream it from me on Yeah, uh, it's so beautiful now. It's crazy. Rest got third with Farong, John Ding fourth, Eddie Lucky Chloe. 
Uh, Accumajor Brian and Speed Kicks got uh, with Hawarang and Jin mm-hmm, mm-hmm. fifth, and then seventh were Running Black Jin and Godira with Claudio. Shout out to Godira. Yeah, but yeah, like I said, it's just awesome that they brought back Electric Cancel and you know yeah. they're trying to turn it into a thing again. Very it was, cool. It's really really cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean it had probably been if you don't know Electric Cancel was a tournament fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. I don't know, a long time mm-hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, that's a great way to put it, Warped Con. The beauty of early 3D games was in the fact that 3D was a thing, not that it actually looked good. I yeah, think that's a great way to put it. I mean, dude, I go play on the Switch, this, the Super Nintendo thing, and I go play Star Fox, and I'm like, did, did it really look this bad? Yeah, it like, was awful. Oh, it's like the frame rate is like five frames oh, per, for sure. per second for or sure. something, and I'm just like... I don't remember Star Fox looking like this. At the time, we all thought it looked great. Uh Well, it was, like, kind of interesting. Like, whoa, this is different and new, but I get what they're doing, you know? It was, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe rather than thinking it looked great, it was, like, exciting. Yeah, uh uh uh-huh, uh-huh. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mario 64 Mario definitely 64 age, is ages, still ages well. It's still good. But I mean, that's also because the game is not based on reality, right? It's still Goombas and Piranha Plants. We don't have a frame of reference of what a real Piranha Plant is okay. supposed to look like. Mario doesn't look like a real human, so it's, okay. it, it works. I, I guess I'm not sure what my favorite frame of reference is for a uh, like giant galactic head in the middle of space, <laughs> as in Star Fox, but... Uh... You true, know. true. Um, I mean, but it wouldn't look like that in reality. For yeah, sure. yeah, 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 for sure. Thanks, I mean, uh, the, the time bum. the time that I saw one, it definitely looked close, <laughs> but it wasn't the exact same thing. Got you it. know, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Caliber six is won by Blue God, then VF five won by Yellowtail with Brad, then DOA six by The Apprentice with Elliot. Tekken 5, Dark Resurrection. Wow, well, it was won by Kudans with Devil Jin. <laughs> nice. Uh, hold on, Kudans was there, and he didn't make. Yeah, I heard he, he got, got 13th. I got I heard he got eliminated earlier. Yeah, he yeah. He got yeah. 13th. Dude, I mean, look, the way that Oh, he tied with Rip? Wow. Dang. Talk about basically done. <laughs> God. Uh, Rip. Wow. Rip, Rip Rip is one of like two or three people who commentate any fighting game who's still actually good at that. Yeah, I know, game. right? Almost exactly. all of us have just stopped, exactly. but he's just exactly. very good stuff. But I mean, also another thing too is that actually Tekken, Rick's does another example. <laughs> Tekken Tekken is getting to that point right now, that Street Fighter Five point where it's just like there's too many good players in the game now, and it's just it's too hard to be consistent. You know, it's we're not gonna see the days where JDCR and Saint was killing everybody and getting first and second, first and second, first and second anymore. There's too many good players. What about what about? Arslan Ash versus Nee. Oh, Arslan Ash versus Nee. Oh, okay, Arslan Ash might be the exception right now. But, you know, once we start getting OI's honey out there, mm-hmm. probably, okay. maybe those two will, you know, be a good okay. rivalry. <laughs> you know, but for sure, Arslan and Nia are probably still two of the strongest. Yes. But the thing is, it's not a foregone conclusion, I think, that they'll win. Okay. Except maybe Arslan. I don't know. I feel like it kind of is. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the game is random. Yep. I mean, I, that's why I always point it out because that's what everybody random. always says about Street Fighter V, mm-hmm. right? No consistency because the game is random. Mm-hmm. Just, come on. Dude, Big just, pile of nonsense yeah. right there. <laughs> well, I'm not worried about Arslan in season three. I don't know about. It. Yeah, I'm sure nobody is. Yeah, I mean his character got nerfed. He plays like it seven characters. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, exactly. The Big House, one of the biggest Smash majors of the year. Mm-hmm. There were over 1,000 Smash Ultimate players, 1,017, and Melee just under that at 909. Nice. Okay. Okay. Okay, but that's interesting because I did see that Smash Brothers Ultimate was won by Zachary. Right? Correct. And I was wondering, I was like, oh, that's cool. So you know, he did better than MK Leo, Leo and all those guys. But they were UFA. I think MK Leo was the only one who came from the US to um, UFA who was like one of the major. Oh, players. really? Really? Oh, okay. Because. Oh yeah, yeah. So everybody else. But is there also, too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But Gluttony also was is from France and was still mm-hmm. obviously in the French tournament. So. Yeah, yeah. Most of them were at uh, Big House. Okay, cool, cool. Nice. So, Zachary won it again. Wow, oh my god. He w- he played Rob, Joker, Wolf, Game & Watch, Corrin, and Sonic? What in the world? It's a good variety. The Buzz, Olimar, Rosalina, and Luma. And then Meister with Game & Watch got third. Wow. Can we talk about these characters here? All right, so Rob, Joker, Wolf, <laughs> Game & Watch, Corrin, Sonic. Olimar, Well, they Rosalina. said Corrin and Sonic didn't fare so well, so... Whatever, I'm counting them anyway. Okay. Uh, Palutena, Donkey Kong, Pokemon Trainer, this is 11 now, Wario, Young Link, 
Peach Daisy. That's right, they're two different characters. Mm. Uh, Pichu. So that was 16 characters in top eight? 16 characters, and the only character that I see that seems to have appeared several times was Wolf. Wolf is there three times. Game & Watch twice. Game & Watch twice, Palatina twice. Game. That's really impressive, actually. How about that? But it says, I guess it was mostly Joker for Zachary. Whatever, I'm counting all of them. Uh, and then Melee was won by Mango. Falco Fox. Ah, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Zane got second with Marth. Leffen, third. Fox. Fiction, fourth. Fox. Mewtwo King did well. Marth, Fox, Sheik. Hungrybox, Jiggly. IBDW, Fox, and Lucky, Fox, Marth. Cool. Well. So everybody was there, but Mango. I watched okay, a bunch Mango of that. coming back. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, okay. shout out to him. Yeah, I sure. mean, the thing is, I mean, obviously he didn't really go anywhere. He just hasn't been practicing Whatever. as much and stuff. So a lot of the Smash players do. I mean, we'll get into this topic a little bit later. They probably make more just from streaming, you know, than trying I'm to sure that's true. So, yeah. Yeah. In fact, <laughs> tournaments, well, yeah, we'll talk about it. But term, tournaments are probably their tertiary sorts of income. <laughs> Not even secondary. Not even secondary, huh? Yeah, among those guys. Oh, interesting. Okay. And then the only other thing to talk about that I know was SFL season two well, week there was six. also what was the tournament that everybody was in Japan for there was the team street fighter tournament that was the one something GG or something shoot what the heck was that called I, I forgot to look at the, I guess I didn't look at the results section and remember to try to add that in like say jam was there tasty Steve was there that's oh, why tasty wasn't right. at electric they cancel did go there. Right, yeah right, and, right, uh, right. and uh Mark Van was there commentating for okay. Tekken as well. Okay. Uh, it was, yeah, one, some, one eSports, was that what it was? It was some eSports and MMA event. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was definitely a team tournament there, and uh, I don't remember the results or for it or anything. Okay. So. okay. Well, I'm sure it was good. Those were some great commentators, so I'm sure, I'm sure they had fun. Sorry. I mean, one of the cool things that they did, too, is that they actually had a clip from, from uh, Tasty Steve and Mark Van and Mike Murray. That okay. they played, that they recorded there, and they played it at Electric Cancel. Oh, like that, that is so cool. That was actually really cool. One esports Tokyo challenge, according to High Fight. I was waiting for High Fight to respond to that because I figured you would know, because he is good at keeping track of all the stuff. Okay. <laughs> oh God, Warp to Con. You probably don't want to look there right now. <clears throat> <laughs> oh yeah, that one's still up, right? Yeah. Our Blizz is down. Um, anything about results? Well, dang, there was pretty significant dough on the line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thirty-two hundred dollars per player for first place, for example. Okay. Oh, our Blizz is back. Huh? Okay. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the results were, y'all, but. Oh, Demetrios Johnson was a special guest and played and commentated for Street Fighter V. Yeah, I still remember at NCR two years ago Demetrius. when it, the last time it was at. Uh, he's like one of the best uh, MMA pl- uh, fighters out there, but you know they filmed a little documentary for South America about him at NCR one time, and they want they, like he wasn't there, but they wanted to because he loves gaming, and so they kind of wanted to talk about the tie-in and stuff like that. So they talked to me about it, and they had me actually commentate one of his matches. Really? Yeah, and while I was commentating it, they were like, you're really good at this. <laughs> they're really? like, They're like, it feels like you've been doing this for a while. It's really great, yeah, because I was commentating like a fighting game. Oh, I thought you meant... He was playing Street Fighter. No, he wasn't playing Street Fighter. Oh, he was was, beating somebody up. Yeah, he was beating somebody up in the MMA match. He was actually doing the MMA match. Okay. And I was commentating that, and I was like, oh, look. He like, oh, you can see he's like trying to attack. His opponent's getting nervous. He's like backing off. He's like a little bit too defensive. But you don't know anything about I don't know anything about anything about it. (laughs) But when I said all that stuff, they were like, that's really good. They were like, that actually was really good. They were like, that's better than some other people that we've heard. I was like, okay. That's awesome, man. Yeah. There you go. Demetrius Krishna Johnson. How about that? Mm-hmm. Well, He's supposedly really into video games. He streams a lot on Twitch and stuff like dang. that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Dude, I'm totally down to do MMA commentary. He's Let's eight go. inches shorter if, than me and weighs more than me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. If if Golden Boy can get into AEW, IEW, then I can get into MMA. AEW. Is it AEW? Yes. Okay, so I had it backwards. Okay, there you go. He is eating... Oh, I'm eating a chocolate babka. Um, I have to go on fast in like 10 minutes, so... 
basically the idea is fill up on something that is not salty but is very dense. Oh. And this chocobabka, let me tell you, is about as dense as it comes. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Oh, because it's Yom Kippur. Very soon, very soon. I'll be in the old synagogue tomorrow. Alright, so Street, Street Fighter League. League continues. And this week, Inferno beat Frost. So Inferno, which is JB and <clears throat> Punk and Broly, <clears throat> was like in the butt. Oh, no, wait, hold on, hold on. No, First they won one. two weeks in a row I'm now. sorry, this, that was the like previous, that was a couple. Inferno beat Spirit. Okay, so they, oh, so they beat... okay, okay, okay. Sabin, Idom, and CJ Truth, but Punk had the OCV to do it. Oh, okay, Reverse okay, OCV. okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it was a little bit weird. <laughs> and yeah. angry. Find a new Came out straw badly. <clears throat> Storm beat Psycho, so that was Tommy Two Step beating Automatic, Automatic beating 801 Strider. That can't be right. Whatever. No. Who beat 801 Strider? Tommy Two Step beat Dankadias. Mojo beat Smug. Automatic beat Strider. And then Tommy Two Step sealed it by beating Automatic. Wow. Okay. I think Yuri might be top ten personally. Uh, Frost beat Gale, Dude, which was like, Dual Kevin like... beating Shine, Rob TV beating Sherry, Samurai beating Do, and then Dual Kevin beating Rob. Oh, okay. So that team won then. Dual Kevin's team. Dual Kevin's team won then. Okay. Okay. Who beat Do? Who beat Do? Uh. Samurai. Samurai Ryu beat Knuckle Dude G. Oh, dang. Nice. Okay, good job to him. Gotcha. Good, good job to him. So there you go. <coughs> all right, well, that's And again, there's the like results. 20 characters who are like top 10 in Street Fighter Five. For sure. Honestly. Honestly. All right. All right. That's all I got. You want to take a break? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Sorry, I'm reading there. Someone said that the players at the, at the, the that esports thing in Japan... Were around bloodied MMA dudes. Yeah, but I don't know if so, that, like, that's true or if he's just joking or something. That's like, like the gig, that. right? If you're gonna be around MMA, like you're gonna be around bloodied people. Yeah, I guess it's true. Oh, well, whatever. Anyways, okay, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Later. I'll be back. You know, I I really need to retweet this over here because that "We'll Be Back" is actually a graphic, and not text. Because I really needed to change it to "I'll Be Back," <laughs> but it's like I said, it's a graphic. too late. Yep, I can't do anything about it. <clears throat> so, get to the chopper. <laughs> Someone actually clipped. The clip of me going yeah yeah, yeah yeah last week, and they said I had the best uh, Arnold impersonation. Oh, man, that was great. Uh, oh no, people are getting Blizzard ads in the. In oh really? The, uh, wow. Wow. What game? What game? <laughs> the Sanford shirt. <laughs> that's your shirt. Oh, that's true. That's yeah, a good way to put it. Pick a top tier. What ads for Blizzard? I want to know. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess if you're, you probably can't hear me ask, can you? Oh, because he's watching the ads. Yeah, you're right. Is it wow? Yeah. Or I hope it's uh like a ice cream cone or whatever like that, you know. And it's the other Blizzard. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Wow, classic. Yeah, that's true. Is anyone playing Indivisible? I I've heard great it things up. about it. I, I haven't, haven't tried it yet. yet. I'll definitely play it, but yeah, I haven't yeah, tried yeah. it yet. I've heard excellent things. Okay, okay. Shout outs to those fellows over there. They got a great crew. Mm-hmm. Making good stuff. <laughs> Terminator combo. Which Terminator combo? All right, let's check it out. What do we got? Stream, stream. Clip this. Stream, clip this for me. Clip this for me. Clip this combo right here. Look, 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 look. Oi! Stream, stream. 
dude. Oh man, Fox's stupid frame perfect uh, uh, tea bagging is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Always makes me laugh. Oh, man. Uh, okay, well, if you haven't watched that clip, it's just there's three crushing blows in it, so it does 622 damage. I can, but... I can put it on if you want me to. Sure, sure. They just require a setup, you know? It's right, like not, right. That's not going to happen, practically speaking. But he can get a lot of good damage. But if it ever does happen, oh, boy. Oh, boy. You know, that's almost Garrus-like right there, you yes. know? Yes. So, so here is this Terminator combo here. Clip this. Stream, clip this for me. Flip this for me. Flip this combo right here. Look, look, look. look. Oy! Oy! <laughs> <laughs> and this is the best part for sure. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. Okay. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Oh, what are we talking about when we come back here? What's, what's up next? Sure that I ah, the matchups. Cool. Let's see what the winner was. Oh, <laughs> okay. I shouldn't have closed that tab. Okay. Um, pause. Oh no, we have a tie. We have a tie. So what do we do about that? I don't know. I say I say we make our pick. I say we choose which one wins. Oh, okay. I think we're the final arbiters. We're the final arbiters? Okay, all right, all right. Well, all right, let's get back. Let's come back. Welcome back to the program. Let's talk about some fun discussion topics. Sure. Okay. What do we got first for 5-5 five, five matches? Well, do you want to start by talking about whether top players should get more money? Yeah, sure. Let's should top that. players get more money? And if so, how should they or we, etc., make that happen? Here's the genesis of this. It's been percolating for a long time, of course, and we've addressed it in the past, but most recently, when the tournament winnings were shown after, I think it was Big House, there was not a lot of money mm -hmm. on the line for the Smash folks, right? right. Top 8s yeah. did not get paid a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. Not much at all. And Zero then posted a tweet that said that year where he won 56 tournaments, he made $45,000. You know, obviously less than a thousand per. Right. And that's not including anything like what the profit of that would be. That's just the revenue. So at the same time, he's spending whatever money on travel, yada, yada, right? Like and that's going to get taxed, too. Yeah, but whatever. Yeah, yeah right. That's, that'll happen. Um, but in terms of the profitability, probably not, not great. And he, that was years ago at this point. And he said that part of why he stopped playing... On top of just like not wanting to compete anymore in general, it was just, just that mm -hmm. he could make more money out of streaming and YouTube, which mm -hmm. he definitely does. Right. Uh -huh. And you know, Leffen, the same kind of thing. He makes more money streaming. Mango does as well. Mango does yeah. right. That uh -huh. definitely uh -huh. definitely happens. Now, find a new uh, this is also as well. Uh, I don't know that it started with the unionization. This is more like I think that was maybe like we're talking about. They're, they're talking about it. So then somebody, I think it was Leffen, brought up unionizing players. And whether that would be a good idea, maybe, as a way to sort of collectively bargain for them to get paid more money, right? Mm -hmm. So, before we get into how you would do it, which is what the unionization uh, question is, is this a problem? And do you care? James? Uh, of course we want the players to make more money, right? <laughs> I mean, like, of course we want the players to make more money. But the thing about it is, again... That money has to come from somewhere, right? It does. Not only does the money have to come from somewhere, but there are more than just players out there who are not making any money For sure. on all this stuff, right? TOs probably have it the worst out of everybody. Right? Not not the main TO, but like everybody that the TO hires to do stuff. Yeah, oh, people running sure. pools, all the these staff. people, the staff, everybody. They're probably just doing it because they love the guy or they just want to be part of the community. Yeah. They want to do what they can. And they're probably making, like, you know, P 
pizza. That's their pay, right? Like, yeah. that's probably the case for it is, right? So the thing about it is, yes, the players need to get more money, but this is not a player-exclusive thing. This is an everything problem right, right. now. Right, This Absolutely. is an everybody yeah. problem. And obviously, you know, the players are the big ones. They should be getting the money. And, and, and it's, it sucks because when players get bigger money, that means everybody else kind of gets bigger money because when there's more money, then more people show up to the event. It sounds bigger. It's more appealing to sponsors, blah, 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 blah. We've kind of had this conversation before. And so that kind of leads to more money. But again, the money has to come from somewhere. And how long are we going to sit there and let TOs and, and, and staff just go by without making anything? So, yes, we want money for everybody, but I don't think we figured out how to do it. And I don't know if all the new money we get should go straight to only the players. So, yeah. Sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. My, uh, I am not that concerned about the ability of the top, top level players to make money. I haven't seen everybody's contract, but I've seen a lot of contracts out there, Jimmy C, and mm -hmm. a lot of the top, top level, we're talking just a handful of players. Right. They make great salaries. Really? Yes. Okay. okay. Great salaries. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm not that concerned about them. Uh, so that's why that's their tertiary. In so, it's, so it's streams contracts and then it's tournament winnings is the tertiary. for at least some of them it's definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. salaries then streams yeah yeah yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, sure mm -hmm, okay. um yeah those are smash players now again that's not everybody this is that's a small amount of people uh -huh. and i haven't seen everybody's deal you know i'm so i don't i can't mm -hmm. say i can't speak on it for everybody but yeah if you if you think about the top half dozen of these players in smash in, in basically most games most fighting games they're making good salaries. I'm not concerned about their ability to earn money or okay. whether they're feeding whatever okay. family they have. Um, instead, I'm more concerned about the players in the sense of what does the ninth place person get? What's their reward? Right. You're more concerned about the lower salary. Correct. Things. Correct. Yeah. So uh -huh. the players who are maybe earning a salary but it's not much mm -hmm. um maybe not even earning a salary maybe they have placed ninth or whatever that means that they're not going to get any winnings from the tournament how do those people how is it sustainable for them i want those pe uh, those are my concerns right now mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. the the absolute tippy top i'm not that concerned they're making money okay mm -hmm. the people just below that that's that is more i think of the issue here because what what's What's going to allow them to keep driving in order to get that top top level? Right. I mean, of uh -huh. course, you ha you may have the drive, but but in a, in a real sense, what is going to allow that to happen? What resources are going to allow that to happen for them to actually finally attain that? You right. need resources, and if you don't, if you're not winning anything, if you don't have a salary, but you're always right below the, both of those things, then... That's like the worst I case scenario. You, yeah, 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 that sucks. And, and you know what the worst thing about it is? Like, I totally get that concern for those players at that level because they're the ones that are basically going to become the top players. They're the ones... Like, yeah. you need to encourage those guys because otherwise we do get an elitist kind of... Uh, set up where yeah. it's just, hey, it's just these sponsored yeah. guys and we're just going to see them in every, all the time. Problem is, I think that's like the hardest it is. place to get money, right? Because there, that money just doesn't exist. Yeah. There is no money for those guys right now. And I say that in complete sympathy for them. I hear you. You know, and it sucks. <laughs> and uh, I just don't know if there's any way to get that money for them without getting the money for everybody else first. You know, yeah, yeah, it sounds like weird trickle down kind of stuff, which you know, obviously, I'm not, I'm not down with. But you know, in terms of growing the scene, I feel like that has to happen. Like the scene has to grow in order for ninth place to get it's more money. Officially yours now. You're not gonna take this home and I eat can't it eat tomorrow. It. No, I can't eat it tomorrow. I mean, after the 24 hours. Nah, that'll be old. It's all yours. Jesus Christ. We can toss it as well. Anyway. Oh, okay. Continue. Anyways, continue. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think that. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying because now I'm looking at chocolate cake. Um, I just don't think that um, you've totally killed my chip. This, this is the next time we commentate. You should just like pull out this cake and throw it at me. I'll be like, "Oh, he's coming!" To... 
<laughs> Fine, wait. What the? Uh, yeah, anyways. But um, that's the thing, right? So I don't know if we can get money for those guys yet, right? Because it's, it's that situation again where let's say we increase the entry fees and instead of increasing the, the payout at the top, we increase the more payout towards the bottom. Then everyone's still going to be mad about the payout at the top. And then events are going to look smaller and, you know, I just feel like you're not going to get the sponsors or the money that can come from other places Maybe. that would help, right? Unless there's two different sources, right? A lot of people have brought up Match Arena. That's something yeah. that uh, Arturo Sanchez, Sabin, has brought up a lot. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't realize, too, is the reason why Match Arena works so well, because it doesn't actually cost people money, to contribute to the Macharino plot, pot. What a lot of people don't realize is Macharino wants people coming into their site. They want people creating accounts and logging in and yeah. everything like that. So there's always a Macharino code that you go to the site, you log in. If you don't have an account, you create an account. You use that one, and it automatically gives a dollar to them. They're basically paying everybody going there to give their site the click, the yeah. view, yeah. right, for a dollar. Yeah. And so. That's why that as a crowdfunding has been working because it doesn't cost people money. But it can because you could go there and be like, oh, Daigo, Daigo's book is here. I've always right. wanted that. You buy that and part of that money. Has, has it been reduced? Yeah, it's like 50 cents usually. Oh, is it 50 cents yeah, now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but regardless, is, it's, yeah. It's, it's there, right? Yeah. So like maybe you could do Macharino to help the higher level people and then have the extra entry fee go for the lower people or divide the extra entry fee to both sides, you know. 30% to the top players, 70% to the 9 through 16. But then it, once you get through 9, 16, you know, how do you support the guys who are at 17 through 33? Yeah. Because remember, those guys, remember the way these tournaments work, it, it, like you can get into 17th place even though you're one of the best players in the world, right? So it's it's a rough of course. situation. Yeah, and as we mentioned, you're talking about yeah. Big House, right? Mm -hmm. 1,017 players for Smash Ultimate. So you could get. Ninth, you've made it past one thousand and eight players, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you You'll can get squadoosh. You will come home with yeah. zero, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And sure enough, and some of the best players. I mean, Esam got thirteenth. He just won a major recently, right, so uh -huh. there, there you, you go. You go home with zero. Meanwhile, at home, zero is making a lot of money. I knew exactly where yeah. it was going. <laughs> right. So on the other side of this, the players who are at the very top can use their celebrity. In mm -hmm, mm -hmm. within the scene, in order to create a stream uh, that gets some funding. Now that's going to be successful to varying degrees based on the player. It's not just whether they're good. It's also are they funny or are they fun mm -hmm. to watch. Like there's other yeah, things yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, of but course, of course. that's more available to the people who are at the top than people who are not mm -hmm, at, in terms mm -hmm, of gameplay. Mm -hmm. So that's something that they could do. Personally, if that's some for me. If that's something that makes a player more money and they feel that it's more consistent, then I th then go for it. I mean, I think that that's yeah, but that, I think that's okay. That hurts the tournament scene, though, right? If I'm they not, just don't go to the tournaments, then that kind of sucks. If if it's the if it's the case that like now ten players aren't going, ten of the best players in the world aren't going to tournaments regularly, uh -huh. that would suck. If one player decides not to, like Armada is not competing in melee singles anymore. Right. That's kind of a bummer, but there's still plenty of great stuff to watch in melee. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. You're still having a good time. Mm -hmm. Zero, same way with Smash 4. Like, you're just, you know, there's still a lot of the good stuff going on. Right. Um, for, obviously for different reasons, but Infiltration didn't play Street Fighter at all this year. Like, right, yeah, yeah, there was yeah. still a lot of great stuff to watch. Right, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. But if everybody drops out, different story. If it's Armada a couple people, 17th and it's Ultimate not that big of a deal. At Big House. He's playing Ultimate, huh? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, well, I mean, but that's the thing, right? But, I mean, if one person does it, and it works out for them, yeah. and it's a better source of income. Maybe they will. I don't know. Then that might actually spread to more people, Maybe. right? It I mean, hasn't yet. I but... feel like that that could happen. The problem with it is, just overall, the FGC is just not popular on Twitch. It's yeah, very yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. I mean, and the, this is Smash. So Smash is, is unique in the sense that it actually is pretty popular on Twitch. Right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, at the yeah. same time, the pots are very small. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, All right? Mm -hmm. So, so exactly Smash, is, yeah. Smash is a little bit different than, than many other games. And in many other games, of course, there's a pro tour right. that will give out <laughs> some amount of money. That just uh -huh. doesn't really exist for Smash. So for them, I think it is a bit more of a pressing question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if, you know, for, for them, if, with routinely getting 1,000 plus players at, at tournaments, 
the question of whether to increase the entry fee, right, yeah. I think is a little bit of a different story. So, so for them, so if there's a thousand people and you increase the entrance from 10 to $15, that's going to cut out some percentage. Right. I don't know what it is. It's silly, I think, to even make a guess, but it'll cut out whatever percentage. For them, that will still leave 900, maybe 800, whatever, uh -huh. like still a lot of people. If, if that same kind of thing happens in an FGC event where there's 200 people in a tournament. Right. Yeah. It's the same percentage being lost, but you sort of feel it more, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I don't, I think that it's easier to justify in a smash sense. Mingo personally. has 10,000 Twitch subs. That's, I don't know. Not yeah, too surprising. Yeah, so the, the, there it is right there. Yeah. Why would he want to go to an event? You know what I mean? Again, like, I'm not that concerned about the ability of players like Mango, right, Leffen, yeah, 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 yeah. Hungry Box. Mm -hmm. Like, the absolute top tier, they're Hungry getting Box money. just sold a Honda they're Civic, doing fun, right? right? Yeah, or something like that. He wasn't even, like, in a commercial for the Honda Civic or something yeah, like that? Yeah, he was. He was for Honda. Yeah. Dude, so he's probably doing fine. He's probably doing I mean, I hope so. Fine. I hope so. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I mean, I don't know if the entry fee is the right choice, yeah. to be okay. honest with you. Because um, I still remember when, you know, Evo put out a poll. They were like, this was like two years ago or something when the topic came up again because Melee winner just wasn't getting anything at Evo, right? Even though it was one of the biggest games there. And now uh, Evo was like, do you want it to be $20 entry fee? As opposed to 10? As opposed to 10. And the, vote, the poll went decidedly to no. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and and not only was it decidedly no, it's because a lot of people enter multiple games, but that's not even true. Like when we looked at the stats last year, right, that's it right. wasn't even that true, right? But so everyone's theorizing about it. It's right. weird because everyone there's I've seen both sides of it, right? People are like, God, the tournament's expensive already. We don't have enough to spend another like ten dollars on this. And then other people are like, You're spending so much on it already, what's another ten dollars? you know? I mean, I, I feel like you should like personally, I feel like Bigger events should raise the entry fee, you know, just to maybe try to pay out the the 9 through 17 a little bit more, distribute a little bit to the top. But the thing about it is then I think people would be mad, right? I, I think it would really have to depend on the size of the tournament. The tournament's 1,000 people. Like, paying out to top 32 is, seems very reasonable. You know what I mean? If you have... 500 people maybe paying out to the top 16. If you have a 250-man tournament, you pay out the top 8. Right. I feel like it's just dependent on the size of yeah, the tournament the kind method. of thing like that. I just don't know what... Uh, I, I would like to see a major tournament try the $20 entry fee. Uh, one that's willing to just see how it hurts them or helps them that year. And then see what, how the prize changes and see if people would actually be okay with it. I mean, it's tough because if, you know, again, you're, you'll lose some percentage of the entrance. And I don't, again, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. But... While it, that may mean that you still have more of a prize pool overall, right? Mm -hmm. You still may have more money in the prize pool. However, mm -hmm. from a tournament organizer perspective, they'll just get less. Right. Because yeah. they're will, right, separating the event, the entry fee and the venue fee. It's just like two different right. costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The venue mm -hmm. fee is not the one that's going to be raising. So mm -hmm. that's just a loss for the organizer. Right, right. And as we've mentioned, it's already pretty tough for most people who are involved in organizing. <laughs> the the top tournament organizers are doing fine. Right. But the the most of the staff, there's a lot of volunteers, like they're just not getting much. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to take in less of a venue fee is pretty right. tough. I think. Yeah, so Electric Cancel definitely so they did twenty dollars for Tekken and Soul Calibur. Okay. It seemed to work out pretty well for them. And uh but on the same side, ten dollars can be a lot of money for a lot of people, right? I mean that's that you're saving up for a vacation. People save up of course for something like an Evo of or a combo breaker, yeah. right? So an extra ten dollars can mean quite a bit. It you can. Know? It can. So it's 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 I, I wish I, I knew more about what percentage cared about it, but right. it's I mean I agree with all ends of it, you know what I mean? I it's it's oh. like I feel like if there was a way to do it properly, and, and this would be weird because this this there's there's no way to do this properly. But what if you did? And this is kind of the whole. This is where economics is getting its head flipped on its end right now okay. because economics has always talked about supply and demand. 
There's the supply, you, the more you have supply you have, and then there's the demand, yep. you know, like this, you have to find that little extra little middle point to figure yep. out how much you want to charge for things. But the problem with that is that's such an archaic method of economics now. Kickstarter has basically thrown that whole entire thing out of loop. Because what we've gotten to at this point in time is we have an internet system where you don't make one product and send it to everybody for one cost. Yeah. And you have to find the balance. Now you can just say, look, you can buy this and get this cool thing. You can buy this and get this cool thing. You can buy this and get yeah. this cool thing. It just depends on how much you want to spend. Would people be down to have higher entry fees and lower entry fees, but if you pay the higher one, you get a cool poster or you get a cool thing or you get a, a, a CEO bag or something like that. But then, but see, the problem is then if someone who only paid $10 wins, they still get the same prize money as someone who paid $20. I think that's worth a try. I think that's pretty think, cool. I think that would actually be something worth trying because maybe we don't need to find the magical price right. point. Maybe we just make multiple price yeah, points. That like, makes sense to hey, me, you're, you're a baller. You love the Smash community. You just have, it's, like, it's the whale method, right? right? right it's like, let's sure. just say you watch it and you're that guy who donates a thousand dollars to Mango, right? Because you just love Mango to right. death and Smash is everything to you. You go to a tournament to enter, you're like, you know what? I'm gonna pay the stupid VIP package a thousand dollar entry fee just so I can party with you know Mango in some cool event or whatever like that. And then that prize money, you have no intention of winning, but you're just there to be a whale and just just to support. You know, maybe that's the actual answer. That to actually be makes with a lot you. of sense to me. I think that kind of might work. So, <laughs> higher entry fee, better pool times. No, 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 no. So, so I don't know. Yeah, almost kind of like a Smash Summit kind of thing, but that was more for the voting process, right? Or does that actually contribute to the prize money? What was that? Smash Summit. You know yeah. how they have, like, you can vote with different amounts of money and uh -huh. stuff like that? Does that go to the prize pool? Uh -huh. Oh, it does. Okay. Well, it, I mean, I'm sure that they take some of the money, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Obviously, you'd have to do this with a legality and stuff like that. We'd have to look and to see what kind of thing it is. Yeah, of course so, it's legal. Yeah. Yeah, there's. I wouldn't. At least from a U.S. perspective, I don't see any problem right. with that legally speaking. Mm -hmm. So I think that might be the best way to do it, right? Because then you let the people decide. The person you're not forcing anyone one way or the other. And what you've discovered. So the craziest thing about something like Kickstarter, about GoFundMe, about a lot of these like uh, you caring and stuff like that, like these websites, what people have discovered is that there are just people out there who do have the money who are willing to spend more yeah. just because they want to support. You see it with music groups all the of time, course. right? They always, like I always buy like the stupid expensive package for like, you know, my favorite bands and stuff like that because I just, I love your music. I love you, the band, and I love you, the singer, and I yeah. just support you, you know. I'll I mean, buy it, the special edition that has the vinyl and all this yeah, stuff, right. you know. It happens on a much much smaller scale, even for our Patreon, where some people are spending like a buck or two a month, right, which we appreciate yeah, yeah. any amount. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And some people are spending 25 which we super appreciate as well. But that's, <laughs> you don't, and you don't need to do anything. Right, right yeah, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, so, so obviously there's like a big variation in what people are willing to spend. I think this is a cool idea, dude. I think mm, this is a cool okay, idea. Okay. Uh, I, I don't... Another, another thing that people discussed was this unionization question okay. among the players, right? So should the players create some kind of an association that could allow them to bargain for better payouts, essentially? If, so pay us better money or none of, nobody in our association will go to your tournament. Ooh. I mean, that's the threat, right? I mean, I don't think that was explicitly said, but that's obviously the threat of it. Ow. Okay, that's like the backwards of what the homeless people used to do in ancient China, dude. There was a bunch of homeless people that would all get together and be like, pay us a bunch of money or we're going to storm your wedding. <laughs> like, you know, like of like officials that's and hilarious. stuff like that. Yeah, that's what they used to do. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, we right. were going to make you lose face by, right, you know, right. by interrupting your wedding. Oh, my pay. God. It's like the opposite, you know. Very funny. I don't like it. I don't like that idea, but... I just don't think it's time for that. Yeah. I could see sometime in the future a situation in which that would make sense for a professional players association. Mm -hmm. And in the context of things like riots, League of Legends stuff, LCS, in the context of, like, Overwatch League... Where there is, there's like one, you're negotiating with one party. Right, yeah, yeah. The Overwatch League and its ownership, right. or whatever. 
That, I think, makes more sense. You know there's capital in it. You know right. a bunch of morons spent 20 to $30 million to get their teams in there. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot of money involved. Right. In <laughs> fighting games and Smash... It's just not like that. Right. That, that's There's what I was all about to these say. different organizers. They're all different. Nobody works with anybody else right, for the most right, part. Right. None of them is making and a lot then, of money. And, and, and if you go up to a tournament organizer, you're like, pay us better payouts or we're not going to your event. Like, the guy's just going to be like... Okay. Yeah, I'm like, I can't do anything yeah. about this. Yeah, I, I just like, literally don't have that money. Right, like, it you're trying to exist. extort what? You're yeah. trying to squeeze blood from a stone, <laughs> yeah, like exactly. literally, right? Like there's just there's nothing you exactly. can do. So, <laughs> you're having quite a day in chat over there. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so it's not something that I would support now, and not in this context. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, I absolutely think there are contexts and times, and maybe in the future, a union or a player association or something that makes sense. Yeah. Here in our communities, I just don't and, think it's and, time. And, and like the the worst part about it is, like I had somebody in the DR come up to me and they're like, "James, you're well known in the community. Can you talk to Nintendo about doing world tours?" And I was like, "Dude, I have no access to Nintendo yeah. whatsoever, right?" And I was like, "And even if I did." All those other guys who have way more access to Nintendo have all already told them that they want this stuff. And I bet there are people in Nintendo who have, who have told, told Nintendo them, yeah, uh -huh. to do it and yeah. they don't care. And so really, honestly, a lot of it, I think, is one of the biggest problems is Nintendo, right? Sure. Smash is... And, and the problem with Nintendo is, like, how do you convince Nintendo to do this stuff when Smash Brothers is already making money hand over fist? Right. Right? right, you have to somehow convince them that if you do this league some and spend millions of dollars on this league, that somehow it will make you more money back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and the thing about it is, they're probably right that they would make more money if they had this league. But how do you get a Japanese company that is rooted in tradition and you know probably doesn't want to take that risk to do something like that? I don't you know, know what I mean? Very hard. And so Smash, I feel like, is always in that unique situation that they can't get any traction going because of this, right? You have companies like SNK that are throwing these world leagues, but they have an impetus to do that because they need to promote their game. Mm -hmm. Their games aren't making money hand over fist, mm -hmm. right? They're hoping that this gives their games attention and stuff like that. Because then you do get someone like Justin Wong won your Samurai Showdown event. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, cool. Okay. Okay, Justin Wong is playing Samurai Showdown. Let me take a look at this, right? Yeah. It's like Smash Brothers. It's like, you know, everybody's playing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's just like the craziest thing, so. Well, on the other hand, NRS is still supporting MK, and MK was the best-selling game of 2019 right. so far. Right, so. but... They're also U.S. based, yeah, okay, yeah. and they just have an interest in being esports because they think it's cool. You know what That's I mean? True, like yeah. they just want to do it because they it's it's awesome. They're yeah. like FGC, yes. Well, yeah, you know, for sure. I mean, on top of that, I, so I certainly think that's true with NRS. I know a lot of them. There, a lot of them are former top players mm -hmm. or just competitive players, whatever, or just like it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, WB is where a lot of the money actually comes from right. when it comes uh -huh. to the esports side right. and for them it's definitely marketing and advertising right that's exactly. definitely how they exactly. look at it and, and so but here's another thing I saw some people talking about this on Twitter and you know there also has to be a way to monetize viewers a little bit more I think because the viewers are going to be one of the key places that you're going to make money from because anything NBA NFL you know NHL baseball all the stuff league in the international for dota and everything like that it's a lot of it is from the viewer or the casual audience standpoint okay. is where you generate a lot of money i think a lot of companies are missing out on really really cool paraphernalia that they could be selling to do mm. stuff like that you know what i mean you need to somehow monetize the viewers the problem is that fgc has a very long standing tradition that they get everything for free and so whenever you try to get them to pay for anything, they get kind of frustrated with it. You know, eight ninety five maybe have been too much at the time, a long time ago. Yeah. But, you know, that kind of thing, it's hard to convince you, yeah. people to do that. But, uh, but see, that's the thing is you could make a compendium for fighting games, but for what? what what's in the compendium? I actually don't know what's oh, okay. in the yeah, compendium. Compendiums have, like, hats and sweatshirts and stuff like that. Sometimes mm -hmm. they'll have posters. Okay. They'll have, like... 
a book occasionally. Right. You know, that, yeah, stuff like that. Little and see, stuff you might want to buy. And that's where I got mad at Capcom when they first came out with those CPT DLC things where they were like, here's a stage. Games sometimes. Here's the two costumes. Mm-hmm. And part of this goes and helps the proceeds, right? Because they sold it as DLC, and part of the proceeds go to the thing. It yeah. should have been sold as a, hey, support, donate, and Absolutely. here's some cool toys that you get out of it, right? And it, I don't think it's probably been as successful because I feel like it's been marketed incorrectly, and I don't think they're marketing it enough, right? Like, all these costumes that they're having come out right now, right? What if they just had a compendium with all the costumes for the people who don't have time? Mm. I really want the Airman costume for Rashid. <sighs> Screw it, five dollars here, but part of it goes to this thing. You know, if you sell it as a compendium, that's probably a better way than if you just sold it as just sold. You know what I mean? Now, but then that's cutting into their profits because it's going into the right. prize money. And right. can you convince the Japanese company to do that kind yeah. of stuff? Oh, it's it's crazy, dude. Yeah, in the past, when the FGC companies have done things like that, it has been successful from mm-hmm. increasing the prize pool perspective has it been successful from the companies making more money perspective that i can't answer right. i just don't know enough but certainly it has led to more significant prize pools for a bunch right for mk sf5 mm-hmm. uh killer Kill instinct. instinct there's been several at this point mm-hmm you being able to customize your character is so much of a personality thing, you know. For example, I'm playing Kappa Honda, which is hilarious to me. It's right the Holy mm-hmm. Honda, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a color I like better than any Honda that other mm-hmm. uh, any of those other ones. And he's a turtle, which is hilarious because that's how I play him. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And he's a Kappa, which is you know the Twitch yeah, yeah, Kappa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there's just any number of ways in which I think that's cool. So I bought the costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First time I bought a costume in SF5, probably since season one. It's okay, been forever. Okay, okay. It's not a fake Max. That's a real Maximilian dude in the chat. So shout out to the Maximilian <laughs> Um, but it did yeah. go well for KI, dude. And, yeah. and that's the thing, too, is like one of the things that Street Fighter is doing cool is that they have good themed costumes, but at some point in time, they might have to consider making customizable costumes like Tekken. I would I mean? love it if they had that, if they had MK or Injustice style stuff. I mean, that's the thing so about cool. it is, to be honest, I mean, everybody knows I hate costumes, right? I hate that thing, but from a this is a way to make more money kind of thing for people. Like, if it's yeah. not in tournaments, like if like in MK, the tournament mode turns stuff like off. It's random. Tekken. Oh, Tekken is the one that turns off all yeah, the yeah. costumes. Yeah, MK is random. Right. But if they did stuff like that, that might work out okay. But just at home to give the people... Like I said, if, imagine if Ryu's fireball looked like a beach ball, right? Like his yeah. bandana... Uh-huh. It's so cool. Right, and then a basketball or a soccer ball, so you know, cool. a volleyball. You can just make it a bowling so cool, ball, right? right? You can just go, like, bowling yeah. ball. Like, it would be dumb, like, <laughs> for you if you just hate that kind of thing. And what they should do is just have an option for you to turn that off so you don't see other people's stuff. But that other guy gets to use it online, that right? That sounds cool. Because if you're cool with it, then you want to see all the yeah. stupid stuff. I mean, like, whenever I play Tekken, like, I play Tekken and a person came in with Leo who looked just like Yun. And I was like, that's cool, huh. you know? I was like, that's really cool. And uh, even in Soul Calibur, like, I will use my Falk Killick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I probably shouldn't have, because apparently it still changes things. Yeah, but yeah. I still like playing against other ones just to huh. see what other people created, you know? Like, I just, like... It, and then that's all tied to the compendium. Also tied to ranked as well, that you earn points in ranked to get costumes. So if you rage quit, you don't get any costume points and stuff yeah, like that. like an MK right now. Yeah, exactly, so... Yeah. Well, in conclusion, we would love it if players made more money. I personally am not super concerned about, like, the top 0.1%, but the players just after that are definitely things to be concerned about. However, I agree with you that I'm... my, My first thing that I want to take care of is for more of the staff to get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Commentators get paid. I mean, we don't get paid yeah, yeah, like great yeah. money at, uh-huh. at all, but we get paid, and that's great. And I don't. And I would prioritize paying like the staff more yeah, than yeah. paying more to us. So. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't. I just want to add one thing. I don't want that money to come from investors. Sponsors, okay. Okay. 
but I don't want to be venture capitalist kind of thing. Okay. I don't want to be emboldened to venture capitalist. I see. Put it that I way. see. You yeah. wouldn't want to sell five percent of your company to China, and then all of a sudden, uh, oh, oh, maybe somebody can't say something. <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Let's move on to the next five five topic. Then Let's move on to the next one. Viewer choice here. Right. That's right. Okay. So, what won in the viewer choice in? All right. Five five matchup. Let's see. And all right, here's the topics. Fighting games have a long history of merging franchises. If if you could pick any developer and have them merge any two franchises into a new game, which would you pick? That's too easy, dude. Okay. I, I would. You want me just, just answer just that say off the what cap? Do you, what do you got, dude? A long time ago, I was already teased by it. Okay. Darkstalkers versus Guilty Gear. Perfect. I'm actually so totally on board. That's it. Thank you. How would you teach a fighting game to a beginner in 10 minutes? Would you use any of the same methods if you had 10 hours? Super big topic. No idea what to say about it. Uh, if my, you were, my, oh, okay, anyways, okay, okay. If you were an FGC tyrant who could dictate two petty, dumb, or funny laws that the FGC as a whole had to follow, what would they be? Interesting, okay. How would you buff Raiden in Mortal Kombat 11 to bring him back into existence? That is such a specific question. But Does I love, he still suck? I love the end of it. To bring him back into existence. Does he still suck? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's on the weaker end. Some people think he's the worst in the game. What do the average ages of players in each game's top 8 at EVO 2019 say about those games and the FGC? That's hilarious, by the way. That and gift. just so the people didn't great. see that gift. It's like 28, 25, 27, Samurai Shadow, 35. So cool. <laughs> Woo! What influence does choice or legality of input device hardware have on tournaments? Oh, there's a relevant topic right oh, there. Oh, wow, how about that? How interesting or not is the idea of events dedicated to multiple games in a single fighting game series, like a Street Fighter games event, Mortal Kombat games event, yeah, yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, okay. Would you like to see commentators or commentary teams marketed as part of the tournament viewing experience? Huh. Sometimes it is already, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What changes in the FGC have you seen since 2009 that have been for the worse? For example, have pop-offs declined? Has West Coast hype died? <laughs> yes! <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, that came out of me. <laughs> that blurted out of oh, me, sorry. <laughs> it has been murdered. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Uh, we uh, weren't always quiet morgues. It was dude, not always if you like wanna that, insult, it is now. If you know how there's always, like, least coast and stuff like that? Yeah. You should call us rest coast. Rest coast? Because we're all just sleeping, sleeping. dude. Jesus. It's, God. It's tough. It's I don't tough. know what happened. I Me mean, neither. This is why I love going to DR, because you just yeah. get them yelling and everything like yeah. that. We uh, are quiet. God. I don't know why. But that's absolutely right. Okay. Anyway. anyway, we're not talking about that one. It was actually a tie. Ooh. With 24% each. Between, would you, how would you teach a fighting game to a beginner in 10 minutes? Okay. Okay. Would you use any of the same methods if you had 10 hours? Uh-huh. And... What influence does choice or legality of input device Ooh. hardware have on tournaments? I literally can't answer the first one. <laughs> so, I don't know what even to say about it. It's like an excellent, awesome question well, that I would have to spend like a week or two preparing like a symposium. But I think it would be more fun to put you on the spot. I though, literally right? don't know what yeah. to say. I mean, well, okay, so we also get one of our own picks, yeah. right? In the event of a tie, do you want to just say we just do those two no matter what? Sure. Makes sense. Okay, so then we don't get our pick then. Sure. Okay, I think I'm down with that. That makes sense. To I'm me. down with that. Okay. Again, though, no, I really just have no idea what to say. Okay, about. so what, what do you, which one do you want to do first? Let's do the one that I don't know what to do. 10 minutes versus 10 hours, right? Yeah. 10 minutes versus 10 hours. How would you teach a fighting game to a beginner in 10 minutes? Would you use any of the same methods? If you had 10 hours. If I had 10 minutes, I just, I wouldn't. <laughs> okay, you have to. I wouldn't, but you have to. if I had to. Yes, you have to. If I had to, then I would try to emphasize to them as much as possible two main things. Blocking. Okay. And movement. Okay. That That's sense. basically it. So basically, in 10 minutes, I would say, look. In every video game that you play, it's about hitting buttons, right? But with fighting games, it's about not hitting buttons. Right, okay. You need to master your movement more than anything. You learn movement in every other video game naturally. You have to move up to the cave in Zelda. 
You have to, you know, run from your, you have to follow from home base to the tower. Like, you learn movement in general. Fighting games, you don't get to do that, but you must learn movement, and then you must learn defense. So don't mash buttons. The, the way that I, a lot of the old first attacks that I've done, I've always said that, please consider pressing buttons as if you have to spend a dollar for every button pressed, right? Okay. If you press a button, you lose a dollar, right? So in that case... You're going to push as few buttons as possible unless they actually are worth you spending that money to press that button, sure. right? That's how you have to consider the game. So I would spend 10 minutes emphasizing movement, defense, over buttons. That's what I would do in 10 minutes. Makes sense to me. I think that sounds great. Mm -hmm. I literally have no idea what to say. <laughs> what would you do in 10 hours? Would you say any of those same things? Uh, I would say a lot of those same things, but I would be able to expand on it a lot more. I would be able to expand on the concepts a lot more. I would actually probably have, I could probably spend nine hours of it talking about my food analogy that I did a long time ago. <laughs> One of the very first, first attacks I did was my, was my food analogy, which was, um, fighting games are kind of like, you have to get fighting games to the point it's like you're eating a meal. Okay. Right? So, for example, if I said... If we were eating a steak and eggs, right, and I said, oh, shoot, David, I didn't grab any utensils. Grab me utensils. You would walk over there, grab a knife and a fork, and you would give me a knife and a fork, right? Okay. If I said, I'm eating cereal, David, can you get me stuff for cereal? You would grab me a bowl and a spoon right yeah. away, right? There are so many different kinds of meals to eat, yet somehow you instinctively know what to use to eat that meal, okay. right? And that's kind of what fighting games are. It's all about getting to that point where you instinctively know which tools to use mm -hmm. in which situations. Okay. And you have to learn to recognize the situation. So even though you have a bazillion things to do, because right. like here we've got chopsticks, some people eat with their hands. Like if you had fried chicken, you wouldn't get me anything because I would just eat with my hands. You'd sure. get me napkins, right? Or something like that. So that's kind of how fighting games are, right? So you really just have to, it's like you're put in a situation, that's the food, and you don't even have to think. Right. You don't even have to think you know exactly what you're supposed to do in that situation. That's what the top players do. That was my food analogy, and that could be like a that nine hour. That sounds cool. That's, that's actually kind of like a nine hour analogy. So. That, that makes a lot of sense to me as well. <laughs> Eat chocolate with a knife. Exactly. Eat chocolate bread with a knife. I'm only doing this because I didn't grab another utensil, and David did not eat off the knife directly. So. That's true. Yeah. The, I think the only thing that I would have to say about this topic that's at all like substantive in any way is that I don't think there's a great difference between 10 minutes and 10 hours in terms of learning mm -hmm. a fighting game. Mm -hmm. um, if the question were 10 minutes versus 10 days or something, then maybe it's a different story. But in any case, to spend half a day or less learning a fighting game is not going to be like a great, a great sort of differentiation between how you end up doing, I think. The funny thing is, I was never actually good at using chopsticks until college, really. Really? Yeah, I, I knew how to use them, but I just became proficient with them huh. when I was in college, which is really strange. How about that? But chopsticks are very easy to use. And once you learn how to use them, they're very yeah. convenient. Wow, I, I learned how to use chopsticks before you. That's actually Probably. pretty, pretty wow. Probably, yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, anyway, that's it on this one. I would love to say more. I just really think this is something that I have to spend a lot of time thinking mm -hmm. properly about to have anything but like, important to one say. One of the other things I think that's really important about teaching people fighting games, however, and as a person who's done a bunch of first attack episodes in the yeah. past, this has been a quandary for me for the longest of time. Most things out there already have an established way to teach people. You know, if I'm going to sit here and go, I'm going to go learn tennis, I'm going to find a tennis coach. And for the most part, most tennis coaches are going to teach you very similar ways. They'll have sure. different takes on it and stuff like that. problem with fighting games is they're still new. Yeah, they're 20-some right. years no, old, right. but nobody's figured out the right way to teach them Absolutely yet. Absolutely right. Which is why every time I've done an intro first attack video, I've done, I've done the food analogy once. I've done the, you already know how to play it because it's just like rock, paper, scissors and everything tied together and everything. Like, you know, I've done like four different ways just to see which ones have been the most effective in, or, in to get people there. And we don't know what the answer is. Yeah. If you want to learn poker, you've already got like four books that you can buy. Darren, Dan Harrington has like one of the most famous poker, how to play poker books out there. You know, there's resources out there. We don't have that yet. And so the thing about it is we shouldn't, 
we should be able to have the answer to this question just off the yeah, top of right. our head. You're right. We just don't yet because we don't know what the answer you're is right. yet. So that's a good way to put yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, twenty five years is really not that long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really not that long. Uh, I actually am not a bad cook, ZXC. Both of my parents can cook very well. But um, I'm actually not a bad cook. I just don't know a lot of recipes. Uh-huh. But like, if you make me cook, like, I was very natural. I used to sit on the count- kitchen counter and watch my mom cook all the time. Okay. And so when it comes time for me to cook, it's very natural for me. Like, I'm very good at, like, just doing all the things that I need to do to cook. Because like I said, I just don't know how to do it. Like, I've watched my brother try to cook things, and it's, like, sad, right? But, like, <laughs> for me, it's just, like, very natural. So I'm actually not a bad cook. Over the weekend, my dad was making fun of me about the time that I called home during college. And I wanted to make hard-boiled eggs. And so I called home, and I was like, hey, Dad, um, when you're making hard-boiled eggs... Do you boil it in water or do you boil it in milk? <laughs> it's always made fun of me. I don't know why I didn't know. And I don't know why I thought boiling milk would be a good idea. Turns out that makes it terrible, if you don't know. Uh, but yeah, that was my... I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> I mean, look. One of my friends taught me how to make gumbo. Wow. Right? Gave me the recipe. He came over one time and watched him make gumbo. And then one of the first things you do in gumbo is you make roux. Right. R-O-U-X, right? Which is just, um, you know, I know it's oil the and flour, right? It's very hard to make. It's very easy to get wrong. And the first time I did it, oh, I made like the perfect, it was like the perfect color and it was beautiful and everything. So, like I said, it doesn't make sense that, no, I can say that I'm a good cook yet I don't know recipes. But every time I do need to cook something, it's very easy and very I mean, it's just a skill to learn. It's Yeah. Like, now now I do stuff fine. It's just, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, when I was a young man, I didn't know. <laughs> don't forget that gumbo feeling. Whoa, that gumbo feeling. Uh, it's inside jokes, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... 18-year-old me definitely needed help, but that was actually half of my life ago, so Mm -hmm. in the meantime, I learned a little bit about how to cook. Yeah, like the very first time I wanted to make a scrambled egg, I made it just fine. It was very easy to me. Yeah, it is easy. It is easy. And then, um, also, I've always wanted to just do this on stream, because Chinese people do this all the time, but we beat eggs with chopsticks. That makes sense. It's glorious. That makes total sense. It's really cool. It's fun. I've done that. I don't think that's weird at all. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, um, want to move on to the next one then? Why did you think you wanted to boil eggs? I really milk? don't remember. Uh, <laughs> I was eighteen and like I had been in college for like a month or two. I, I mean, don't know theoretically that. speaking, you probably could boil an egg in milk. You could boil anything in anything. <laughs> right. Would, would it would make it for it edible food? I don't know. I don't know if it would change the taste because of the shell. Right. The no, shell. I mean, you don't boil milk. Boiling milk boils off the liquid oh, yeah, aspect yeah, yeah, of the milk, right, and then it just true. becomes yeah, yeah, nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So don't don't do that. <laughs> we need a MythBusters episode now here. Okay, the other one. The other. All one. right, all right. <laughs> what influence does choice or legality of input device hardware have on tournaments? I'm calling this cross up versus Tekken. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So this has definitely been a topic, and it's been a topic obviously for a long time, but most recently. The cross-up, which is a new thing out from Hitbox, from the company Hitbox, which allows you to have the stick on the left and also individual buttons for directions on the right, was was ruled as being legal by Evo. And the question is... I didn't even realize that even full schedule stick was ruled is legal by... Illegal. Right? Well, it, was it was legal? legal I think, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, no, I think you're right, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, it's very good for at least some things. Right. It's very easy to do things like in Tekken to do wave dashing or electrics and that kind of stuff. On electrics it. is just is, is nothing. Right, right. Absolutely. And nothing. so, you know, of course, in the context of that game, those are meant to be difficult but powerful things. Mm-hmm. You're, you're meant to spend a long time trying to learn. You're meant to sometimes screw it up. But like that's in the balance of the game. Find a new rival. This makes it a lot easier. So is it... How, how does it affect the tournament to allow these things or maybe alternatively to ban them. Right. I just want to say in this situation with the cross-up and versus Tekken is I brought this up a year and a half ago. I remember. Ago, I remember. And I said 
this is going to happen. I know. And it's going to cause problems. <laughs> Let's figure out what to do about it now. Yeah. And everyone's like, don't worry. It'll never happen. People won't do it anyway. It's not a problem, James. Okay? That's all I want to say. You're right. Is I said we should have tackled this head on a year and a half ago. Anyway, it's this one's a tough one for me. Okay. Because I come from all the sides yeah. on this one, in particular for the Tekken. For specifically for Tekken. Okay. For other games, I think anything goes. Okay. Like just you need to create your game in a way so that execution is not fundamentally based on one hardware input. The joystick Makes button combination was designed to be hard because hitting down forward and a button on the same frame was not intuitive because you don't even know when the joystick's hitting the yeah. click. And in fact, on different machines, it's going to be different. Sure. Yeah, right? it's going to neutral first, which is hard. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of stuff going there's on. There's a lot of like crazy things going on in that input. But it's designed for one particular piece of hardware. So as soon as you create another hardware, I'm not for dumbing down the execution like I know a lot of people are. But I want you to come up with execution in ways that is unaffected by input method. Sure. A hitbox or a cross-up is not going to make that Guilty Gear combo any easier. Okay, right. It's not going to make the Marvel... It might make some parts of the Marvel combo easier. It might make some parts of the Marvel combo harder. Not sure. But, like, it's not going to be, like, the difference between I need zero practice to do 100% electrics versus I need years of practice to do 100% electrics, right? It's never going to be that deg degree, right? So I already gave an example. If you made it so that electrics where you had to hit the button two frames after you hit down forward, the cross-up doesn't matter anymore. It's all about practice again. I see. Because the thing is, it was about the now. same timing thing, right? right? So you could do that, and the execution would be just as hard. It would be still someone who'd have to practice and get good at it. It doesn't matter what controller you're using. I see. The weakness of that, of course, is now we've just killed... Three years of practice, five years of practice from a lot of these players out there. And Tekken is a game in particularly steeped in tradition. Yeah. That I it's not as simple as like saying, whatever, adapt people, because Street Fighter changes with every game. Guilty Gear changes fairly significant and there's significant changes in Tekken, yeah. but I don't think it's enough to just completely throw a tradition out the window okay. until Harada says we are rebooting Tekken. You know what I mean? If he makes Tekken 8 and it's still similar, I don't want to throw that electric tradition away. Okay. I would actually ban the cross-up. Okay. I would, but I can't figure out a language that bans the cross-up that doesn't ban the dual shock. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the problem right there. So. I think people sometimes get too caught up in categorization mm -hmm. as a way to answer these things when, in your case, in that instance right there, you don't need to come up with an overarching scheme that would justify okay. banning one and not the other. Okay, okay. You just say the cross-up is banned. Right, but then every... Or would you have to say the cross-up and anything like it, yeah, basically? Right, right, exactly. Okay. You, like, pe people are capable of enforcing rules mm -hmm. without there being, like, an overarching right. individual um, sort of inherently, uh, internally mm -hmm. consistent rule set. Anyway, I wouldn't ban it. I'm just saying that that's if you want to, you mm -hmm. don't need to have it be... Oh, I, well, how would I ban one but not the other? I think you just do it. Right. It's fine. Um, one yeah. thing I do want to add, sorry, is that Rip came up with a beautiful idea, though, that, that developers can do that just solves the entire problem for okay. any controller. Okay. Is that on the config screen for your buttons, you pick analog or digital, and only one of them works. Yeah, makes sense. And so basically, when you configure your buttons, you choose which one you use, and that's the end of it. So if you're on a hitbox, you pick D-pad. No one would ever yeah, pick now. analog, frankly. I know some some players who play pad with analog stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, except for the pad players yeah. with analog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's probably the easiest way just to do it. And I think that's actually a, a really clever way of solving the problem without having to ban anything. But that's kind of what Evo did to put the onus right. on the developers. Exactly right, exactly. So that's, yeah. as we mentioned, when Evo came out with this rule set, that's why I thought it was so smart. That clearly the idea is to is to kick the developers into like into gear. Be mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, you guys mm -hmm. solve it. Don't right. we yeah, don't want to yeah, solve yeah, it? You guys mm -hmm, solve it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that is the right that is the right way to do to do it. Um, I you know I I'm most interested in trying to play the the 
best input method for the players. Yes. And I think that's just not stick. It might be for some people, but I think by and large, it's you know easier, cheaper, more uh, ergonomic to play something like Hitbox or Pad, depending on, on the player. I know we talked about this a little bit last time, but I will say that in one of Sonic Fox's video, he clearly states that Pad is harder to use than Stick. I don't know why. He said that pads like have more problems and like they can break down easier. It's harder to do some certain things. Like stick is clearly easier. That's so funny. we need as many advantages for the pad players as possible. That which is, is why so he's funny. one of the arguing things. And he is a pad player, so um, that's hilarious. Because I know so many <laughs> other people who think it's exactly the opposite. So right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Um, from an individual perspective, you know, you tend to think about the things that are problems rather than the things that are easier for you. Mm -hmm. It's but, true. That's but actually true. But I do mm -hmm. think that the, I do think it's true that, personally, right. I feel hitbox is just the best. Yeah. But whatever. I mm -hmm. I really think that it's probably not the traditional stick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want that to be the priority, and so, whatever rules that we come up with, I would rather prioritize the ability of players to play slash use things that are cheaper slash use things that are ergonomic, mm -hmm. rather than that it's important that in Tekken you have this move that's difficult to do. Right. I'd really yeah. rather prioritize the players themselves. Yeah. I mean, I still like the idea of having moves that are difficult to do or you get rewarded for doing things. I, look, I'm not opposed to having right. difficult yeah. execution. I think mm -hmm. your your phrasing of it is, is good, that you want to have something that um, is difficult to do regardless of the input method. Right. I think that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's basically what I'm, it was. I'm, I'm, t I'm totally down for that. I just think that in this instance of... The existing Tekken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I'd rather prioritize the players yeah. being able to play rather than the game mm -hmm. having its own rules. Yeah, it's it's a tough situation because, like I said, I just know that there's so much tradition steeped in it. And as a person who has practiced things that are very hard to do, yeah, I would feel really kind of frustrated if I spent all this time becoming really good at electrics and then someone's like, oh, I'm just going to use this controller. I can do it 100% of the time. Whee! Oh, like, I just, I just think that that would be a frustrating situation. And again, if it was another game, if it was Street Fighter, like let's say this was happening on Street Fighter, I'd be like, suck it up because Street Fighter Six is going to come out and it's just not going to matter anymore. You're right. But the thing is, Tekken, like I said, has been doing this literally for 20 years and I just don't feel like throwing 20 years away, you know, 20 years of tradition kind of way. And again, that's more of me being on the emotional than the yeah. logic side of I things. I think that, like, I don't want to get too caught up in, like, a sunk cost situation where because something has been, mm -hmm. uh, where you've been putting in time and effort and stuff, right. you need to keep doing it. I'm not, right. I don't think yeah, that's yeah, true, yeah. right? But like I said, for Tekken, it's it's a different story for me. I just I just feel like because just from the conversations that I've had with a lot of the players about Tekken, it feels like there's a lot of that kind of mentality in the community, yeah. right? But then there's the situation where Sonic Fox wants to play Tekken by moving, putting all the movement on the trigger buttons. You've seen that. I right? did, yeah. So Fox put out a video that was about how you mm -hmm. could change the individual buttons to anything on a mm -hmm. PlayStation. Mm -hmm. It lets you remap uh, just on the PlayStation itself rather than mm -hmm. individual games. And you can do anything like make left, left directional, uh, put it onto L1, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whatever, like whatever yeah, button combination you want. Mm -hmm. And they talked about how you could do it, you know, in a kind of quicker fashion than you might think and how it might actually be practical for tournaments. I don't know. I guess I don't have like a great reason not to. <laughs> right. And, and that's the thing is like. It's it's bringing up all these questions because if cross up is going to be legal, then yeah, that should right. absolutely be legal, yeah. right? If you ban cross up, you ban that, but you can't really ban that because you can't ban accessibility options because maybe somebody actually needs the right. accessibility options, right. right? I mean, you get players like Broly Legs, and for sure. you know, there was that video of that one guy doing this crazy King of the Fighters combos, I saw that. you know, who basically only had like thirty percent of his arms, right. and he's just sitting there doing the the like some crazy Vanessa combo. You know, you have these situations where maybe you have to use these accessibility options. You can't ban that. So I think, you know, in Sonic Vox, that's where he brought it up. He was like, pad players have it rough, more rough than stick players and stuff like that. You need to give them more, as many advantages to equal what they have as possible. So can we get these button configs like that, right? And so... Um, I can't disagree with him. Yeah, like, I think that I makes think, sense. I think, I think it's, it's fine. I think it's fine. 
I think it's fine. 645 says, I'm for PS4 system-wide button remapping. Embrace the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> it would be chaotic, of course. You'd, you would have to now just not, not just think about changing your buttons in-game. You'd have to mm-hmm. remap every, every time you sit down. Yeah. Make sure that the accessibility stuff is Inside of Box pointed out that you can always use the, the analog stick because you can't remap the analog stick. Okay. So if you sit down and you want to check, and you can always navigate with that, find whatever okay. is the accept button, and then you can easily change whatever. And then I even replied to that and said that even on joysticks, you could always switch the joystick to analog as well on almost yeah. every controller. So you, even there, you can... Actually, I can't. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Hmm. But a lot of controllers, you can't. So well, yeah, you, well, would, you, can. you would get screwed if you set okay, that I mean, machine like that. Well, that's... Or... I'm not the only person who has that situation. So if it's, tr- if it's not the case that everybody can't fix it, then maybe it's not something you right. could do. But yep. if everybody can, then I'm okay with it. The other thing, too, is that you could just make it a rule... That if you modify the accessibility options, and after your match is done, if you don't untick that thing... This will never be... Then, yeah, I know. I that'll be an that. Yeah, because when you lose your salty and you want to leave... You're out of there. Yeah, so that's a tough one. I don't know how that... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, what do you say? Like, say that's a loss for you, and now yeah, you're out no, anyway. Yeah, like, what's yeah, the penalty? Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. That's probably not doable. Again, if you, if you can easily change mm-hmm. it back, then I'm cool with it. You but can if not, add the accessibility menu to the quick menu, so it's actually extremely fast to turn that off. Okay. Hmm. But yeah, again, as 645 also says yeah. in that same post, it's a struggle because people have already already have trouble desyncing pads. Yeah. Yep, it's true. That is true. But I'm not opposed to the idea. Yeah. Look, I don't want to limit the input method. Yeah. I don't think hitbox and cross up making things easier should be something people complain about because. My favorite conversation that I had with somebody was, I don't like these new controllers. Uh, How did he phrase it? It was like, I don't like these new controllers simplifying the execution of things. And my response to him was, I don't see it that way. I see that I don't like relying on one input method to be difficult over complicating things yeah. you know what I mean I just don't want one controller configuration to be in the consideration of things I want people to design games more intelligently so that they work for all input methods I want the execution to remain you know that more than anyone else that I love execution in there and everything like that so I hear you dude yeah Paco Stevens suggests Make entry fees twenty dollars, and you get five dollars back when you lose if you don't storm off salty and desync your first. <laughs> oh man! Otherwise, someone gets a gets a uh, gets to slap a red D on your chest and bap, and then you've got the scarlet D. <laughs> scarlet you D. You didn't desync your controllers, oh, you know, and so you got to walk around with the scarlet D on the you, dude. And then then they'll know not to give you your five dollars back. Oh, so dude. there you go. Genius, Paco. All right, anything else to say about this one? Um, no, um, but the new controllers are not a bad thing. That's just how I want to sum it up. The new okay, controllers are not a bad thing. They're not at fault for anything. And in fact, I like that they're pushing people to think about the games differently. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. It definitely <laughs> sounds like a disease, 100%. Or a good game too, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's some other Man, my questions. split box got catted. I heard. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Which Ajax, cable? Ajax, uh, the cable that connects the hitbox to the, the split box to the PS4. Oh, like that the most cable. Important cable. Oh, geez. Because if it was like the phone cable that you have, you know, the one that goes in between, didn't you? Oh. Didn't you use like a phone? Oh, uh, Ethernet cord. Yeah. Is it Ethernet or is it like the Ethernet, actual yeah. old phone one? It's RJ45. Oh, okay, okay. Because yeah. I was about to say if you had. If it was regular phone cable, yeah. not the network cable, I could give you like 90 spares. I got plenty of backups for Ethernet yeah, yeah, cables. Yeah, like, okay. that would have been better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't have any backups for a USB B to USB A. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, in retrospect, I don't know why I did that as like the way to do it. But Dude, you know anyway, my next design is? will not have that. I actually wanted to get a spare USB to USB cable just yeah. to, just to like replace a cable. Just. The regular U, you know, like what what you plug in is that USB A is the main USB yeah. A to A. 
I couldn't find one in my house. Really? Oh, I have a thousand. Because like everything nowadays is just USB to mini to sure, C sure, sure, sure. to everything. Everything I had was like one of those. And I was like, I can't find a USB A to A anymore. It was crazy. Well, what I'm going to do for the next design now is do USB C to USB A because that uh, is okay. that's really common. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you can definitely just get converters that yeah, do it easily yeah, within the yeah. stick mm-hmm, itself. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Okay. Okay. We move on. Oof. It's a big one. Here's what happened, um, I don't know, over the weekend, I guess. There was a hard... Oh, maybe even more background than that. So there's this ongoing issue in Hong Kong. And I'm not an expert in it, okay? Mm, but I'm not either, despite being to, Chinese, so... <laughs> well, mm-hmm. um... They're in a revolution situation. Yeah, so okay, so, so basically, Hong Kong has been owned by Britain for many, many years. Yes, right? it was uh, British for a couple hundred years. Then they turned it over to China with the understanding that China would not like have its own, not instill its own system of government, that they would let Hong Kong retain its, its democracy, which right. it had under mm-hmm. um, the UK. And over the last couple of decades... That's been kind of whittled away, mm-hmm. and over the last several months, there have been protests in Hong Kong related to this. It's not like I, they're not asking for independence, as far as I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's more about having Leave us universal alone. suffrage. Right. Yeah. Don't have um, uh, agreements that allow the police to extradite to China. Mm-hmm. I think uh, they don't want all the weird facial surveillance monitoring yeah, right. and all that stuff like that. Tone down the policing, like yeah. make sure that there's accountability for the police. It's yeah, like I guess you guys don't fairly know. reasonable demands. Yeah, and, like I don't know. China has this whole thing now that they just have cameras sitting around everywhere that they just like they can recognize your face. Dude, and I read could... that they came out with a a camera that has so many megapixels that it can recognize each individual face in a crowd of 10,000 people. What? Yeah, and not only that too, but like, aren't they like assigning social points to you yeah, or something oh yeah, like that? It's so real crazy if you do if you do good deeds, you get social points. If you do bad things, that they'll dock you, and then you yeah, know. They and can... keep in mind what they mean by that is not not good and bad in like the typical moral sense, uh, but like don't speak out against the regime, like that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's getting real dystopian. So anyway, yeah. there's this ongoing issue between Hong Kong and mainland China, and over the weekend. The there was a Blizzard Hearthstone event that was won by a player from Hong Kong, and after that happened, the player was asked something by the commentators, mm-hmm. sort of with respect to this, and the and the player then said some stuff. He that put on the protest. He mask did. He to... put on the protest mask, and he talked about Hong Kong and the demands and whatnot. And basically what happened was that the, the two commentators, I think they knew what he was going to say. Yeah, yeah. There's this whole thing where Chinese people have like poems that they say stuff and I think it's, I was reading about this like in four words or something. It's okay. Like memes kind of things like that, right? And so the commentators knew he was going to say something and they were like, okay, just go ahead and say what you're going to say and we'll end the interview, right? And, but wait, and so they just start like ducking under the table and the guy basically says his four-worded mm, like, thing, which basically was like revolutionary, like Hong Kong revolution, let's go kind of thing, right? Um, that's how it was described to me, someone in the article that I read, is that they're popular and they spread. So they were kind of like the original meme kind of thing like that. So, But they're poems, they're poems, basically. And he said it, and the commentators came up, and were like, okay, okay, and they did some stuff, and they clapped, and then the whole thing was over. That Twitch VOD got deleted almost instantaneously. That Twitch VOD just went away. Yeah. And then, Although reproduced in plenty of places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Blizzard came out, was it the next day or something like that? I don't even know how long it yeah, took. Yeah, it was today or this, this morning uh, or yesterday. Yeah, this morning. And they basically said that player, Blitzchung, yeah. has now been banned from competing in Hearthstone for a year. All of the money that he's won will be rescinded, and I think it's his, three thousand bucks, for all. Yeah, and his rankings will be stripped, and all this stuff like that. And the two commentators were fired. Yeah, um, the statement specifically is. Uh, okay, I'm bringing it up here on the old internet from Blizzard. They found that the action has violated the 2019 Hearthstone Grandmasters official competition rules, section six point one zero or O, I guess, and is behavior which does not represent Blizzard or Hearthstone Esports. 
they quote a part of the contract that basically is called a morality clause. Mm -hmm. And this clause is very common in anything that's related to entertainment. So it's common in esports, but lots of other stuff too. And it's common for event organizers to have and teams. It's very, it's very common. What it basically says is that if you do something that casts some negative light on the, per the other person in the contract, team, league, game, whatever, then that team, league, game can you know, dump you from the contract, ban you, fine you, suspend you, whatever the issue, or whatever they want to be able to do. Um, and that typically is entirely up to them. So mm -hmm. what this will often say, and this one does, is that it's in Blizzard's sole discretion to decide what counts as something that uh, brings the player into public disrepute, offends a portion or group of the public, or otherwise damages Blizzard's image, mm -hmm. or results in removal from Grandmasters. Yada. So that's really up to them. And again, very common. But in the context of esports, I'm not aware of this having happened in this kind of a situation <laughs> where Blizzard thinks that this guy, you know, basically supporting Hong Kong's demands, um, is so negative that it would, you know, rise to this degree <laughs> right, where he would yeah. um, be banned for a month and, yeah, <laughs> both casters they will immediately cease working with. Or, I'm sorry, banned, banned for a year. Uh, I don't think I don't think that this has happened before in an esports contest. You know what the crazy, ironic part is, is if Blizzard did nothing, yeah, nobody would know that this even happened. <laughs> you know, I don't think that's you, you true. would have a few people maybe. I think it, I don't I, think it would be this extent. Well, I think that probably is true. It's definitely a stress mm -hmm. and effect going on, but I think I think some people would have known about it. Yeah, there, China off, would be mad. Yeah, that's true. Sure. So so the issue here, presumably is that they're worried about the Chinese market. Now, mm -mm. Tencent, which is a Chinese company, owns, I've heard, 5% of Activision Blizzard. Mm -hmm. I've also heard 25%, so I'm not which sure which one's real, but right. in any case, some portion, and so that there may be this internal influence in the decision right, making. Right. But I kind of feel like it would have happened regardless. I'm not sure that that's the real reason for it. I think it's more it's about the wanting the market of yeah, China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, no, so 100%, 100%. it's so big. It's so big. It's so big that all, you know, if, if literally everybody in the U.S. stopped using any Blizzard stuff, but one-third of Chinese people continued to do so, there'd be more people in China than there would be. Right. Like, I mean, I always give the example that when, you know, League Finals, LCS Finals, there was like, oh, we had more people watching us than the Super Bowl, right? And I think there was 200 million people watching it. Like, 98% of that was from China. Yeah. Like, literally, if you took out China, there's only two million, like, like literally 1% of the viewership of the LCS finals was from not China. I've heard that a bunch of that is, like, click farms and stuff. Yeah, but, exactly, too. So, But, I mean, but even not counting that, I'm sure there was a lot of extra yeah, demons. Yeah. And, and, and what the crazy thing about it is, this is all on the heels, this just happened to the NBA. I know, isn't that wild timing? It's crazy, yeah, right? Yeah. So one of the guys, one of the lead guys at the Houston Rockets supported Hong Kong as well. Yeah. And because general basketball, manager. I think it was general manager, somebody, I don't remember, I but like, so. it was, NBA is super popular, especially the Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets that was the most Yao Ming was most on popular. there. Yeah, exactly. And so, all of a sudden, like, Adam Silver, you know, Mr., we, we would back Colin Kaepernick if he was on our league, yeah. because our players are allowed to speak out, we don't block what our players are able to speak. Then all of a sudden I was like, this guy doesn't represent us, you know, and then everybody was like, we're sorry, China, and all this stuff. He did put out a statement later that was more, not in support of the GM, but it was better. Oh, was he? Oh, yeah. okay, okay, I did not see that. that was, I, I think that was today that. or something. Yeah. It, was, oh, it, was more, okay, it was more recent. Okay. okay, okay. In any case, pretty wild timing that they both happen to correspond so closely to each other. Um, this is extremely disappointing for Blizzard it's to do. Great. It's extremely yeah. disappointing for Blizzard to do. It's not just disappointing for us. We're not, we don't work in Blizzard, but mm -hmm. I haven't talked with the people I know in Blizzard, but I can't imagine that they would support this. No, yeah, and yeah, yeah. we know a lot of people in Blizzard. There's actually a lot of fighting game folks who work for Blizzard um, in all sorts of roles, art, programming, uh, lead, leads in some cases. Mm -hmm. Like There's a lot of stuff. Esports, uh, event organizing... Oh, okay, so Silver, over the place. Silver did a good job. It was the owner who did so in the tweet, I, apparently. Because so. I know that guy actually had to apologize eventually, too. He had to like throw out kind of an apology statement or something. But, yeah. 
Okay. Anyway, Blizzard, the Blizzard people who I think I know probably wouldn't support this, and I have heard that... Well, I saw that there was a picture where somebody covered up... Uh, what is the statement on Blizzard's grounds that it was something like every voice matters yeah, yeah, and that yeah, got yeah, yeah. papered over by somebody today. So there's clearly uh, some like internal interesting. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, unrest. <clears throat> okay. Right. And the think globally one. Yeah. yeah. So <sighs> anyway, it's very disappointing. It's, it's, a, it's a big problem that a lot of companies have what do you do about the Chinese market? It's obviously so hidden behind all the mm-hmm. rules that the party wants to be hidden behind, and yet it's so big. It's by far the biggest market. Yeah, China money affects all the movies as well. It's huge. I it's talk huge about in everything this, entertainment. I mean, like people don't realize, but that's why every movie has a scene in China these days, or that's why. Star Wars 7 had the stars from the raid in it. Rogue One had Donnie Yen in it, right? Batman Begins is a scene that takes place in China. Transformers has a scene that takes place in China. The Arrival, um, The Martian had China helping them solve the problems at some point in time, right? The uh, Ancient One got changed from being Tibetan to Tilda Swinton, not because of any sort of crazy reason. It's because China hates Tibet. Is that really why? Yes, that's why. I hadn't heard of that. Wow. Because they want that movie to sell in China, right? So China... China has okay. a rule that they can only take 10 movies from U.S. every year. And so all the U.S. markets are battling for that. And so they always put things into their movies to appeal to China so that they would be one of the 10. Because China is just one of the biggest markets. They make yeah. so much money from those movies. Yeah, totally. It's uh, tremendous in size. <laughs> I'm going to disappear. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> yeah, I mean we're not gonna It's it, it is it is a big problem and companies I really would rather have them decide that something like supporting democracy is more important, but <laughs> it doesn't seem like that's true and that's there's there's obviously many, many more instances in which this kind of stuff has been going on forever. Mm-hmm. You pollute when you shouldn't mm-hmm. and you you know, you you take the sort of path of least financial resistance mm-hmm. even if it leads to gross stuff right yeah. that has been something that's been happening for a long long time this is just another incarnation of that but it's just a particularly gross one i think i think that mm-hmm. it's it's a really big bummer from the perspective of people who would try to support something like democracy in hong yeah. kong you know i mean it's to not it's, support that is it, pretty bad and it's really hard for me too because i'm chinese right it's funny, I want to be like proud of my country and stuff yeah. like that, but it's hard. I, it's, yeah. it's really, really hard for me to do that, you know? I mean, let's put it this way. My family grew up mostly in Taiwan, so even though my parents aren't really Taiwanese, they still consider themselves Chinese, but sure. I have a lot more roots in Taiwan, and the way they treat Taiwan at the Olympics, they can never be Taiwan. They always have to yeah. be the the the, indep- the IOC or whatever I forgot what it stood for or something the Chinese like that. Taipei usually right yeah Chinese Taipei or I thought it got changed to something else Did it? So, okay yeah so you know I'm yeah absolutely uh, Kamala as a cop I do I do love the people right like I always thought like oh, yeah come on. yeah when they were like I was backing you know I was happy that the they figured out China started getting caught into the Me Too swing of things where they started talking about all the sexual harassment okay. over there and their social medias that were available to them started banning any hashtag me too I right see. so the chinese people started instead of putting a hashtag me too they would actually put a bowl of rice and a rabbit okay right because right uh rice in chinese is me and, ch- and a rabbit in chinese is too okay so they actually just <laughs> they would use the emoji for a bowl of rice rabbit and that's how they got around genius. it and it was actually pretty genius and you know just i feel for the people there of course. because the people are also suffering these kind of things but then they also kind of get brainwashed into the whole system as well, well i'm sure that's unavoidable to yeah. some degree but i yeah. mean the the things that are going on in china are just I mean, they literally are committing a genocide right now. There's mm-hmm. actually a genocide going on in yeah, Western China yeah. with the Uyghurs. That is something so gross to support. It's hard for me to describe my revulsion at it. So 
needless to say, I'm not going to support Blizzard anymore. I hope that it's something that other people do, and that's hard for me because Blizzard has been such a big part of my video gaming life since forever, um, starting early. I mean, Lost Vikings, maybe, since since then, which was <laughs> early right? 90s. Dude, I've been I mean, wanting to replay that forever. Now I'm just yeah, like, I don't know if I could. Totally. Uh, StarCraft and WarCraft and World of WarCraft, all mm -hmm. gigantic parts of my video game history. Again, I also know a lot of people who work there, um, but I just feel like it's not something that I can support. I feel like it's something that we have to say no to and try to shut down, and, and I want this to also be something that is that other companies see, you know what I mean? I don't want, God forbid, like Capcom does something like this as well. Um, well, at, someone asked me, what would you do if Capcom did this? Yeah. And I said... A Japanese company kowtowing to China is not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> well, I'm not sure, man. Did you watch the tournament that they had in China? I mean, no. Yeah, well, it oh, was a, it, they didn't like, there wasn't kowtowing. Oh, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, they're, they're obviously trying to make the Chinese market happen. Yeah, 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 of, yeah. but know. I don't think it's big enough, and I, I really honestly don't know if Japan would actually do that. So I really don't There's know. just so much. No, I, I understand. Yeah. I know the history. It's just uh, the market is so big. It's so big, and it's really hard to deny. And clearly, the the greed of that overweighs or overwhelms whatever amount of faith or caring there is for things like democracy. It's a big bummer, and but something Capcom, to be uh, to be worked against. If Capcom did do something like that, I mean, again, it'd be one of those situations where I'd hope I'd have the wherewithal just to be like, well, then screw it. Then yeah. you know, I think no that's what I would Capcom, have to do. So. Uh, I really don't want that to happen, but I guess we'll see. Shoutouts to Mortal Kombat for being so gross and gory <laughs> that it's just not even for sale in that country. So I don't have to worry about that from the perspective of somebody who loves to play MK, commentate, whatever, watch it. Uh, I just don't have to worry about whatever the impact yeah, of Chinese know, market right? is because it's not going to be part of it. Mortal Kombat time, Mortal let's Kombat, go. Mortal Kombat, dude, let's 100%. Go. Yeah. Uh, man, that's funny. You know, I hadn't thought about it, but you're right, Eric, man, I will. Thanks. Oh, yeah. dang, that's yeah, right. That I didn't even think about that. I spent that. like a few hours making that, too. I really like how that Twitter turned out. Twitter avatar? But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Man, bummer. Okay, yeah, you're right, though. i got to change the Twitter avatar. That's an excellent point. When I was young, I remember us uh, in the U.S. talking a lot about how uh, U.S. democracy and capitalism beat the USSR's authoritarian communism. That was mm. like a big part of our childhood right. in the U.S. The story that... The older mm -hmm, people told us. Mm -hmm. And I think in retrospect that that's really not true. I mean, for many reasons. But one of them is that it wasn't that the... It wasn't that capitalism is something that beats authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. It's not. It was that we couldn't enter that market. So we didn't. But in retrospect, if companies in the U.S. had been allowed to enter the USSR and market there, Dang. I really think it would have been different in terms of how our, the stories that we would have told ourselves about how or whether we would have won the Cold War um, because now <laughs> holy shit yeah. that's mind blowing right I've been now. thinking about that the last couple of days holy crap because now we're capitalism is obviously China China is right. can you call yeah, it communist yeah. not even really anymore uh, uh -huh. but you can definitely call it authoritarian for sure and capitalism clearly can work in an authoritarian context because they're doing it and our version of capitalism, rather than increasing their liberal, open society, whatever, is in fact doing the opposite in our own. It's, right. it's shifting itself and what our society is more towards the other one, the more authoritarian one, in order to open up a market. The market, in, in effect takes priority over all of the rest of the things that are considerations. And this, it, that, that idea is not something that it's at, at all new. That's 200 years of critiques of capitalism, mm -hmm. but right now it just feels like it's uh, <laughs> at the same time as I know that, and I've like read a lot, and okay, I've, at the same time I'm like, this is gross, and I am somehow surprised. Right, I, don't, yeah. I don't know why, but I am nevertheless surprised about it. Jesus. I think it sucks. It's a real big bummer. Damn, that's crazy. I didn't even think about it that way. Yeah, absolutely. If Russia was a big market for us back then, we would yeah. not have been that opposed to it. No, no. Ugh. Oh, BlizzCon is going to be... Oh, my God. They have to be very careful at Blizzard about what they show on stream because 
I can tell you, I'm sure this will happen, that people will go up to the open mics that are always at BlizzCon. Right? Mm-hmm. There's always panels where you go up, where you get to ask a question. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and typically it's like funny stuff, like about the lore, or right, it's about yeah. the characters, whatever. Oh, God, no. No. This time it's not going to be People that. are going to learn how to say this. that phrase in Chinese, and just they're yeah. just going to be chanting it think, during everything at BlizzCon. That's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, will they even have an open mic? No, they're going to take that away. I don't they're know. They're going to take that away. Which, which would be another so. big loss. I mean, this... That, that is one of my favorite things about BlizzCon, that there, you have this opportunity to ask the people who are in control of this company that's making games you love right. about the games and the future. That opportunity is so rare in, in anything in video games. Mm-hmm. So few developers or publishers have that kind of moment. And for that to be gone would, would really be sad, but I think they might. I think they might take it away. Oh, man, this is a kind of crazy situation right now hmm. you know legally it's not true that corporations have to do all they can in order to increase profits that's not actually like an obligation that they yeah, have yeah, legally of course, speaking of course. well a lot of people think that it is and when these conversations come up it's part of what people mention as being the, the responsibility of the corporation to its shareholders to try to increase profits as much as possible it's not a responsibility <laughs> I mean, you can't you can't be reckless with the potential profits, right? You there's some duty of care and obligations and stuff, but you don't need to do everything gross under the sun in order to be profitable. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, legally speaking. The hardest part is that a lot of times, in order to be profitable, you do have to do a lot of gross things. But I I don't even I just, know that that's true. But to be the most profitable you can be, I think yeah that, yeah, yeah 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 that's what I mean. Okay, that's what I think I mean. that that yeah, often yeah, yeah, entails yeah, yeah, gross yeah. stuff. To try sure. to be like Walmart, Jeff Bezos, Amazon yeah. kind of thing like that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, No, 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 for sure, for sure. To be just plainly profitable, yeah. yeah. I, I meant like to be like I want to make as much money as I can kind of thing. So. And I think I think that if, if the ethos of mm-hmm. companies is to, or, or not just companies, but uh, people in general, is to have a system in which capitalism is, is the, the kind of insatiably growing capitalism that can that always has to open a new market okay wow you're getting killed over there i got catted by jasmine she was mad that i was giving nathan all the attention if that's the idea that you have to have this always growing capitalism then i kind of think that this stuff is the inevitable consequence of that yeah it's Mm -hmm. just it's just going to end up infiltrating its way into the growth stuff you can see it it doesn't need to be like that we don't need to have that ethos but Mm -hmm. that is obviously the one we've had for a long time yeah So it's uh, it's an indictment of China for sure because China's, you know, <laughs> it, it implicitly or explicitly requiring this stuff. But it's an indictment of us too, at yeah, the same time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we've been pushing the capitalism narrative for so long to the point where you know when you try to like talk about socialism, everybody's like, "Ah, socialism is bad." Like, but I mean, like all of our roads, you know, police, car insurance. Yeah, we've told ourselves a lot of bad stories about both systems over the years. Yeah. Har- harmless ones, or har- harmful ones for sure. Right. I mean, not that I, I don't want to have uh, like state-run socialism or anything. Yeah, but, yeah, of course, of course, of course. I definitely would also not want to have extreme nihilistic capitalism. <laughs> I definitely don't want that either. You don't need either end of the spectrum. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Dude. So, oh, man. But that's where we're unfortunately at in this case. Yeah. So I mean, I, I someone hope- actually had that tweet that said if... You earned eleven dollars an hour since the ratification of the United States in 1776. Yeah. If you earned eleven dollars an hour up until now, you would have as much money as Jeff Bezos makes in four days. <laughs> what a system we've made! And then someone oh, else man. said that if you took all the money in the U.S. and divided it evenly between every human in the country, okay. everyone would have two hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. And so a family of four would be millionaires. Right, for sure. Like, that's just, like, an insane amount of money. I saw somebody actually talk about this and talk about why it's hard for people to process it. It's because the numbers, when you just add zeros, it just, it doesn't, like, one million doesn't look that much smaller than one billion on a on the paper. Yeah, yeah, it's only three more zeros. Yeah, it's only three Look more zeros. Mean. So it goes from this long to this long. Yeah. But the fact that it's a hundred times more. It's a thousand times more. A thousand times more. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. 
math. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the fact that it's a thousand times more, like it's like almost mentally unfathomable yeah. how big. Like they were using the example of like steps that you had to take in a staircase. Like here's a million, right. but then a billion you'd have to walk like way more stories and stuff like that. So it's it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, it's hard to get your head around. Yeah. Anyway, I really hope that there can be enough of an outrage to get Blizzard to reconsider. However, at the same time, I absolutely don't expect that because there's so much potential money in China mm -hmm. that I would expect them to basically dump whatever, whatever number of people care about this. Right. Which is not going to be enough, I think, to really affect the decision making. Um, I hope so. I absolutely do not expect it. I mean, so one of the guys in the chat says that they actually work at an Amazon warehouse. I mean, I mm. hope that they're treating them better now. I know that they were supposed to do some improvements, but I don't know what the conditions are and everything like that. And it's just, it's it's annoying because, like, he could be giving his employees so much more money. Yeah. You know, he could just be giving them so much more money. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it sucks. And people have talked, too, about the fact that it's Activision Blizzard and that a lot of the people who were Blizzard originals are gone now. Oh, right, that's true. And it's true. just yeah, not yeah, the same yeah, leadership yeah. that it was many years ago. That stuff's true. Yeah. I don't know. I, again, is that enough to make this decision happen? I'm not sure. I really think that it's about the market. Mm -hmm. hmm. Big bummer. Sucks for those commentators, too, right? Dude, I, mean, I mean, like, jeez. So, I think they handled it almost kind of, like, I think they were mad because they let him do it. Yeah, so I don't understand Mandarin, I guess is what they were speaking. Uh, um, I've read two things about it. One is, or I guess heard, one is what uh, you're describing, uh, which is that they knew it was going to happen, so they let him do it. Another one was that they asked him a question that, that prompted him uh, to say okay, the thing. Okay. But I... Don't understand it, so okay. I don't know which one it was. Gotcha, gotcha. In any case, obviously, I think that they shouldn't fire them. Right, right. I <laughs> mean, I guess some people think that uh, someone says that uh, they heard that they were on it, you know, in on it or something like that. So who knows? Maybe they were or whatever. But I mean, if that's the case, then I mean, if I was those casters, I would just be like, yeah, then I'm fired. You know, you can't feel bad for them. But I'm not saying that like, like it's their fault. I'm like, then good, good on them. For sticking to their guns, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, so some things are more important. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I know. And it's, we're sitting here talking about Amazon, and we're literally using an Amazon product right now. Ah, too, so, yes. You know, it's always one of the toughest things. It is. It is. I think society should be improved somewhat, as they say. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean. It, yeah, we that, talked about the NBA. That super sucks, but. Unfortunately, you just can't get away from Amazon, Google, Facebook, and a couple other companies online. You just can't do it. If you're not going to use Amazon anymore, not just Twitch that's down, it's any site that uses Amazon right. Web Services, which is a huge chunk of the internet. Right. I mean, it's kind of like you said with the MK thing, right? It's like when you heard about the war horrible conditions, you're like, do you stop buying MK stuff or is that hurting the people who worked on the games, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. Like we have someone in the chat who works at an Amazon studio, right? Yeah. If we stop buying Amazon, do we hurt him? If we stop buying sandwiches from Chick-fil-A, does that hurt the employees at Chick-fil-A? You know, if we stop buying from Wendy's, does that hurt the employees at Wendy's? I mean, it does. Yeah, that's why that yeah. line from the good place is so good. You know, the the, the TV show. Yeah. Where like, you have a you have a sa chicken sandwich out there that and right now that if you eat it means you hate gay people, <laughs> and they're so good. That's <laughs> 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 oh, so true. <sighs> it does suck. It does suck. Yeah. Last season, the last season of the Good Place had a really nice little message on the morality of decisions and stuff like that. Suda Baker, I think we all know how it's going to turn out. Well, Hong Kong, a city that's very big as cities go, mm -hmm. but nevertheless a city, will it beat an intractable country of a billion people that has already shown in other escapades mm -hmm. that it's willing to just murder many people? Yeah. It currently is interning millions of people and harvesting their organs. It's the grossest thing you can think of. Will they stop versus Hong Kong? Of course not. We all know how it's yeah. going to turn out. But it's still important to support and show which side you stand on. I still think that matters. Right. Yeah. Harvesting yes. organs. Those are, yeah.
It's just horrendous to even think about. But that's the situation. So. Can I just sit here and hug my cats? I do the same a lot. She's gonna meow very soon. Yeah, I think I think I agree that we need to at least make it harder for them, um, and and sort of even at a more minimal level. I don't want the things that I like and care about in my own region to uh, accede to that stuff. Right. I don't. Yeah. I really don't want that to. I don't want to play any role in it. Can I stop it? I I can't stop it. Right. I don't need to be a part of it though. And I really hope that I'm not. And I don't want the people who make the games that I like, among many other things, mm -hmm. to be a part of it either. Hmm. It's a very scary timeline. Yeah. It's a very scary timeline. I mean, it was kind of a historical blip that China wasn't a superpower. It's, it's always been that way. Like, right. every, every few hundred years, there's like a blip, and they fall down for a century or something, but... Historically speaking, they've, it's just too big to not be a superpower. You know what right. I mean? Like, it was going to become one again, of course. Mm -hmm. It would have been nice if it did it in a way that was not authoritarian in the way that it is, but unfortunately, there you go. Well, I can't wait for this episode to be demonetized on YouTube. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's talk about FGC News. Okay. Let's, let's move All on. Right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, okay. What do we got for FGC News? Mm. All right. Um, first of all, can we? Can you put some of the stuff on the internet on the stream, if possible? I mean, most of the stuff is on the internet already. Right? <laughs> okay, <So>. fair enough. <laughs> the media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which one do you want me to put on? Okay, um, the one that I am putting on under the. SF5 right here? This one. Oh, yes. Okay, gotcha. Oh, this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for this a complete thing. switch of things, let's talk about a, what I think is, hilarious story. So, there's a guy out there, or something, whatever, somebody out there, playing by the name of Rising Dragon God, who has some of the absolutely most genius, trolliest hacks that I have seen in a long time. Genius stuff. Look at this. Can you just ma maximize it? Look at just this. maximize, maximize it? Maximize it, yeah, because you have to in order to see the little Ryu down there. Oh, God. <laughs> I haven't seen this one yet. It's so good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the little Ryu! Crouched oh, under the low jab. You couldn't oh, hit him. Look at him skating along. He's <laughs> under the water. You can't see him under the beach. <laughs> and he has infinite meter too. <laughs> Wait, he had a Shinsho Ruken? Super? Yeah. They gave him a Shinsho Ruken super? Right. Adoken! I mean, I'm not mad at this because Ryu might actually be good now. Look at this little guy. <laughs> you see his move speed, by the way? Yeah, go for the sweeps! There you go! Sweep the leg! Or sweep the whole body! Look at him carry you can carry infinitely. You hear me? He's going... Hoop, 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 hoop. Okay, here's another one that I think may actually be funnier. I've seen a couple of them, but this is the one that I'm thinking of. There you go. Oh yeah, this is definitely the one I'm thinking of. Nice. Okay. Oh, just a normal match. You know, going to the replay here, it looks like it's going to be Zangief versus Birdie. 
Hard matchup for Zangief, they say. That's what they say about it. And they're loading in. Okay, looks like it's gonna be a Mecha Geef. That's cool. Versus a birdie. Well, I think that Round the Zang is gonna have a leg up on the birdie. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. They just sped it up. They fast forwarded the actual video. What I want to know is whether that's true or whether it's just that he increased the speed of the leg. Because you don't know, I mean, you can't see the pop. There was that 99 hit glitch. I mean, the, the, the safety mechanism. Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, I guess you can see he is increasing the speed of the leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so cool. Look at that giant leg. The, the best, though, I think is actually later after this round. Oh, yeah, yeah, the next round is. <laughs> He's just stuck. I wouldn't rage quit either. I want to see this. If I were him, I would have <laughs> what, like, What's your next trick, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna block! Look at him up there! It's a mountain! He's, you're always in range for the SVD! It's just absolutely genius. It's, it's so funny. It's crazy that you can actually mod the game to the point where the other side of the, the game no understands it too. Right, right, right. That is that's the part that blows my mind. <laughs> right. That the game is designed in a way that visually and when you change something on your end, it affects the other guy's game. But I guess that happens if you are chosen as the server and they're the client in the peer to peer relationship. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So they kinda have to obey what you're um, but like there's isn't there like checks or something? I, I don't I don't know what they're doing there, but that is so funny. We have our Olympic qualifier. We'll talk about that. We'll Rising about Dragon God. Yeah. But I just wanted to bring that up because I think that's some of the funniest stuff that I've seen in Street Fighter. In a long Opponents time. don't lose ranking points. Yeah, huh? I was just going to say. So my understanding of this is that he's not he's he's out there to like troll and be hilarious, uh -huh. but he's not actually costing people ranking right, points. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's even glitched it so it doesn't take their ranking points. Yeah, and that if, is... and if you look at his CFN profile, uh -huh. he's not like number one or anything. Mm -hmm. Like he's way down mm -hmm. there. And even though it was like he had won the last like twenty or something, right, he right. still hadn't like actually moved up. In right. Yeah, either, yeah, so. yeah. That's one of those um. Chaotic good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the yeah. chaotic good yes. on the chart, you know what I mean? Yeah, so funny. So oh funny. my god, that's so funny, dude. <laughs> Alright, that's all. <laughs> I just thought that was great. But again, I mean... <sighs> I, how, did, how did they let that happen? Oh. Anyways, okay, yeah. I'm not sure. What else is on the news item here? Yeah, let's talk about the Intel World Open news. Which is the Street Fighter V event that will be happening yes, the alongside Olympics, the Olympics the in Olympics, Tokyo yes. in 2020. Totally cool. Let's talk about this rules. God, we are making enemies with every organization. We were making enemies with countries, and now we're going after the Olympics here. I love the Olympics, by the way. The Olympics are the best. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> The Olympics. <clears throat> All right, so it's a team tournament. Now, actually, can you bring this up and put it on the thing? Because I think that uh, it's instructive to look at the graphics that sure, are on this sure, website. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, where is it? Down here. Uh, oh, here. This yeah, one? that one. Okay. Right there. Okay. okay. Yeah, just put these up that there. One? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Do, 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 do. All right, cool. So here you go. Here's part of it. So it's, as you notice, battle format. Three on three team battle. Qualifiers. National qualifier, regional qualifiers, online qualifiers. All right. Um, move down. Intel World Open 2020 Finals. All right, so if you notice, 
the finals have two eh, slightly different tracks. <laughs> One of them for the top seven teams includes national qualifiers in 12 selected countries, regional qualifiers in eight regions worldwide. Then the top 16 to 64 players who vary by, by country move on to the next round. Online tournaments in the other one. All right, so you end up with regional qualifier finals in eight regions worldwide and national qualifiers finals in 12 selected countries. And then they all go to Katowice, Poland, where it's 12 national teams and eight regional qualifier teams. Uh, each country's top four players represent their national team. Didn't it just say 3v3? Yeah. Anyway, moving on. On the other side, uh, Japan qualifiers. Japan qualifiers finals. Top four players represent Team Japan. It's not even that they jump into the... Dude, can you pronounce that again? I always said Katowice, so you know... I don't know, man. I, I, Katowice is what I would say, but okay, I don't know okay. for sure. They don't even go into that area. They don't even go fight here. No. They go straight into the straight grand finals. Straight to Japan. Straight to the grand finals. Straight to the grand Boop. finals. In true spirit of the Olympics. Yes. Of allowing all the countries to fairly compete against each other. Yes. Japan is going to the grand finals. And also in true spirit of the Olympics, the host country gets in there, which is what it does. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's always been nonsense. And right. I'm glad that that nonsense can be applied to one of our games now. Super cool. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, alright, next one. National Qualifiers Progression System. Boy, I don't know what that means, but there's something here about online qualifiers, national country 1, national team, selected country 2 through 12 national teams, Regions one through eight winners something happens then you go to Poland. I'll let know. you know how I think of this right now. So <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay. Tasty. It's online qualifiers for all of these. And then go to the next one here. Is there Uno Mas? Uno Mas. I wonder if I can scroll high enough. Yeah, okay, there you go. All right. The road to Intel World Open Tokyo Final. By the way, the first national team announced, the USA. Yes. Congrats to the USA. <gasps> Yay. <sighs> Here's the qualification schedule. Again, these will be online. Mm -hmm. Three, 21, 328, etc. At least one of these is on, I think, final round weekend. Mm, that's right. So, that's cool. On March 20th through 22nd. <laughs> so, it's just right in the middle there. Um, so, who's, who's going to final round and can't enter the USA Open Qualifiers? Right. And which other of these tournaments that happen every single weekend during one of the most important parts of the Capcom Pro Tour season, which other tournaments will be blocked in the same way? I don't know. I look forward to finding out. All right, that's all. I think it's <laughs> so stupid. You know. Y'all know my thoughts about the Olympics. Just in general. Just as like a general. I love the Olympics. You may love the Olympics. I love the Olympics. <clears throat> oh, boy. Um, I, I just... I think very poorly of it. But, yeah, I know. No, I know. But on top of that, this is like particularly badly made. Is it a 3v3 tournament or a 4v4? They said that at the end you pick three of the four players... Why not, I guess. I, I guess it's just... I, I mean, because that's kind of how Olympic things sometimes work. You bring a whole team, but then only certain ones. Whatever. I'm so checked out of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go through the... Can you imagine being the player who goes through this whole process? But it doesn't even matter, because Raising This whole God... process, and then you don't even get to play on that right. day. Can you imagine I being know, that right? player? Why would they do that? Rising Dragon God qualifies for every I, spot. I just hope so strongly that that happens. Online qualifiers. Oh, I just hope it happens so much. It's such a weird situation. I don't know. Like, 
did they do StarCraft 2 at the Winter Olympics? It says it's the same format they did for StarCraft 2 at Winter Olympics. And, I, and you know what? That explains a lot. Because that's probably like, oh, we'll just do online qualifiers for fighting games just like we did for StarCraft. It's probably the same. Right? It's Of course, it's exactly the same, right? The net code for Street Fighter Five has got to be... I mean, it's like one of the biggest fighting games. It's got to be solid. Well, furthermore, who will even think about it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we're obviously at a, at a stage where online play is going to be great. It has been for 15 years. We've been playing Brood War online since 98. Mm-hmm. Or StarCraft 2. Yeah, StarCraft back in like a modem days. You yeah, know, and it was so fine then. So yeah. I'm sure it's fine now, 80 years later, but... You know, this is, just sounds awful. Oh God. Anyway, please hire me for a commentary on any of this. <laughs> oh, Come on, what? What could go wrong? What could go wrong, nothing, James? Nothing. Nothing would go wrong. Absolutely, would be amazing. It would be. I, I think picture, I would do a great job. I just picture... Uh, so speaking of that, those Blizzard commentators, you know... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> anyway, please. Now, find a new rifle. Can I last five minutes live? <laughs> like, it would seriously just be like you would see... Like, like people would be, like, pulling them yeah, off the a big feet, novelty yeah. cane comes yeah. out. <laughs> Yoink! <laughs> and you just... Oh, you just hear all this stuff on the oh. side. Oh my god. Oof. Okay. Anyways, any I mean other? it's it's in Japan, so you know what? Worst case, they kick me out of there and I go walk around Tokyo for the next couple yeah, of days. Yeah, right. That's, not the that's worst. The main not thing. the worst thing. That's what I want to do. I just want to go. I just want to just be able to hang out in Japan more, dude. I I, I like hanging out there. Yeah, very interesting place. Mm-hmm. Very interesting place. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> they won't notice the change. Yeah, if you yeah, swap yeah. and say jam, you'll sound the same. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Anyways, any other FGC news? I think there might be one more thing. Let me check here. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Knuckle Dew and Echo Fox have parted ways. Knuckle Dew now is a free agent. Yeah. I hope that won't last long. Slash, don't expect it would last long. Back to being my wallet, Knuckle Dew. Yeah. Again, so you know, unfortunately, he's hopped around quite a bit over the last couple of years. He was in Liquid for yeah, some good uh-huh, period of time, uh-huh. and then he was on, I think, Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was. Yeah, and then he was, he was on yeah. Echo Fox. Yeah, but that didn't yeah. last, unfortunately. But I mean, Echo. I mean, I heard Rick Fox is like suing now. Though. So Rick Fox got pushed out of Echo Fox, right? Uh-huh. And now he is suing a couple of the Echo Fox investors right, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, a bunch of things it sounds like, but being pushed out, committing fraud, whatever, like all mm-hmm, sorts of mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, one of those people is the guy who was the racist, racist right? yeah. and was the reason that uh, Riot pushed Echo Fox's team out of the LCS, mm-hmm. forcing them to sell. By the way, I heard that they still got thirty plus million dollars for that, so at least that's good. I expect that they would they would get you know a pittance compared to right, right. That's at least good for them. But, you know, you got to think of Echo Fox as being basically a sinking ship, I think, at this point. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The worst part of I the part that I feel the worst about Rick Fox is part of his name is on there, I know, you know? I know. And it's like it you sucks. just don't want to have that associated anymore. That sucks. Can you just, like, force them to change it to, like, Echo Wolf or something? <laughs> like that? that would be yeah. great, actually. Just pick uh, Nan- and what, Nancy? Echo Nancy? Just have it be Echo Nancy for no reason. That would be good. <laughs> Just switch it away. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Sauna Fox is still Echo Fox, and so is the Kill Sage. Yeah, and I don't think that they would drop Sonic Fox because I think Sonic that's Fox. last resort. Yeah, I'm sure. Sonic Fox. But on top of that, if although you're, I think Sonic Fox might want to leave, I, I guess yeah, we don't yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you are a pro esports player, make sure you get your lawyer to negotiate a guarantee that they can't fire you in two weeks or one month at any moment. Make sure that it's for a guaranteed period of time, which, not coincidentally, Sonic Fox and The Kill Sage are still on Echo Fox, and everybody else who didn't do that uh, isn't anymore, so... Sonic Fox doesn't need to contact Make sure you, <laughs> Make sure you do that. 
whether it's me or somebody else, please, please do that. It's the Will Smith thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. I mean, that's a big deal. It yeah. doesn't. It doesn't matter if they say that your salary is going to be ten thousand dollars a month. Whatever. If that is. Not guaranteed. If they if the contract says that they can let you go in two weeks or one month for any reason at all, then you have a two week or one month contract. Right. You don't have a three year contract or whatever right. it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unless you specifically negotiate a three year contract. Oh <laughs> the one that did is still there. Oh anyway, you guys get the point. Please do that. Okay. Uh all right. Um Anything else you want to talk about? I think that's it. Let me see. Oh, PS5 is launching holiday. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. How excited are you? (laughs) I mean, the craziest part about it is, like, one of the first things that they listed was all the controller innovations. And at this point in time, that's kind of what you have to start doing. Right. Because you're not getting the innovations to the graphics right. anymore. Maybe the AI is going to be a little bit better because you have processing power and the ability to control more threads and stuff right. like that. But the games aren't going to look that much better. I'm sorry, they're just not going to. I don't think that's a controversial statement. <laughs> I just I just really just not. don't think it they're is. just running up against the limit at yeah. some point. I mean, some of the features that they're trying to put in the controller are kind of interesting. I like the fact that the triggers are not going to be able to have it uh, electronically change the resistance. Right. So, like, you can, like, if you're trying to draw a bow and arrow, it can, like, get harder to do and stuff like yeah. that. I think it's cool. Yeah. It's definitely cooler than whatever the hell Nintendo is trying to do with that ring controller. Oh, my God. I forgot about that ring yeah, controller. Yeah. Uh, I, someone else didn't. Oh, it was a Casper who didn't know about it, and I showed it to him, and he was like, what the hell? He would flip out, I bet. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was having a great time with that. Yeah. Thing. But, I mean, obviously, we'll have to see what happens with the console because honestly to me it just feels like with every console release that comes out the console should just last longer yeah the console life cycles have, are, are being maintained they're all lasting about the same amount of time but I just feel like they should be getting longer because they, the, I just feel like the consoles are getting obsolete slower you know when did PS4 launch 2013 six years ago yeah I guess I guess I thought it was longer ago than that yeah, yeah. that's right uh, and when did PS2 launch? PS2 launch... Mm, March 2000. Oh, so that one lasted a long old time then. So it's a- Well, PS3 came Oh, out. did you do PS4? Yeah, sorry, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. PS3 is 2006. Yeah, yeah, see, six, six years, seven years, six years. Yeah, wow. see, oh, seven years, ultimately. Yeah, years. so it's the same length. Interesting. In my but mind, it, it felt longer. Right, exactly, right? And that's just the thing is, like, because I just feel like the consoles don't feel like they get out of date as quickly as they do. Yeah. And we're older, so time just goes by faster or whatever. Well, like, but I feel like it has lasted longer. Oh, you feel like it's lasted longer. I don't Maybe know. that's Maybe just because just you didn't reason. touch a PS3 last generation. <laughs> Actually, that may really be why. Right, yeah, because yeah. we only played on Xbox 360s back then. Yeah, right? you actually so, might be right about that. yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, it's like, they're going to have to throw something at me that's like, hey, look at this awesome feature. And I'll be like, whoa. But right now, to me, the greatest console is the Switch. Right. Because I can play it anywhere. You know, I mean, my Switch is literally sitting right here. There it is. Because it's so easy for me to play and everything. And I'm buying every game on it because I can play it wherever I go. It's it's such a great great console. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. I, I, you know, I agree. I'm not that excited about the PS6. <laughs> I don't know about PS5. that, Max. So Maximilian jokes like don't have to play on training stage in every fighting game to avoid frame drops, but they're gonna add like way more crazy background things in the background, and you know, we'll have to see. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Could they do that? Absolutely. Will they? <laughs> Boy, you have more faith than me, man. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> Uh, anyway. uh, yeah, I, look, the the um, the pad stuff doesn't even really matter to me because I'm gonna be playing fighting games. Right. Yeah. I'll exactly. be I'll be playing on my split box version ten or whatever. Right. Like, what what does it even matter to me? Right. That the exactly. Pads are gonna be haptic or whatever. I, I was just know. talking to uh, Sherry Jennix recently, and you know, one of the things she hates the most is waiting in airports, and I was like. 
it's so easy just buy a switch yeah. and like pass the time she's like i yeah. only play fighting games and i was like okay that's fair yeah that's <laughs> so true if you're only a fighting game player it doesn't help but right? if you're so. anything more than a street fighter player then you get to play on switch mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you got you got mortal you got tag you got dbfz mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm missing something. Unclear is coming. There you go. There's yep. a Guilty Gear, Exer, I think Accent Core Plus are on there. So, so Tekken is the big one, dude. Mm. Honestly, honestly, Tekken is the big one. Uh, Power Rangers, actually, and oh, I found yeah. out why Power Rangers has crossplay now. When a lot of other games, the crossplay is only between the Switch and the Xbox, mm. because they're the ones that let you do it. I see. Right, so they don't have crossplay with the PS4 because they, that's just how it works. So, okay. Um, I've heard really good things about that Power Rangers game, dude. It's getting like it's like improving every single yeah. time. It's crazy, actually. Dude, right, Tekken anyway. would look amazing. And speaking of Tekken, by the 5. way, but speaking of Tekken, by the way, I played Tekken again last week. Okay. On stream, and it was the best Tekken I've ever played in my entire okay, life. Okay, let's go, James. So, like, there's all these different ranks here. Beginner, there's Q ranks, ninth to first. Okay. Then there's the Dan ranks. There's the first Dan, the third Dan, light blue, and then green, yellow. So I've been stuck in green forever, and I was a warrior, which is the lowest yellow rank. Okay. I went online. I could only play for two hours because I was having trouble with my streaming equipment and stuff like that, which magically worked again, but mm. I'm not going to question it. Knock on wood. Kind of thing like that. And uh, I went from warrior to vindicator to juggernaut to usurper. Okay. In those two hours. Okay. By winning the majority of my matches. Okay, let's go, James. And I was playing, like, everyone on the stream was like, Holy crap! You're a lot better at this game all of a sudden. Sick, and I was like, I was like, I don't know what happened. Let's like go. it just it just started working. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So dude, I am super happy. I even fought an Eddie. The Eddie beat me most of the time, but I have no idea what that character's doing half the time. Okay. But I still beat him like two games, even though I would have never won before. Nice. You know, like so, That's like so great, the whole man. thing Congrats. is just like clicking. And so I'm really excited. I want to keep playing tag. I'm gonna make super this, cool. I'm gonna try to make. This uh, this month, Techtober is what Okay, I'm let's so I'm go. Trying to play as much tech as possible. So rad. That's but, awesome. Yeah, the game. So, I don't know what happened. It just like clicked, and it yeah. just everything was working and stuff, stuff like that. And it was funny after I I got to Usurper, and I was like, should I try to break into the orange ranks? I was like, no, I'm gonna stop here. Dang, even nicely pacing yourself. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna stop okay. here and just be happy about it, right? And I stopped, and it was weird. After I was done, like I just felt happy. Like, my cats were extra cute. Like, you know, like, oh my food God, was so tasting you. better, you know? It was weird. <laughs> That's really great to hear. Yeah, it was really, really crazy. And oh, then, like, congrats. I That's even so did that cool. on my last uh, uh, Teppin stream. Okay. The stream helped me get to rank A3, which is the I highest I've that. ever gotten. That's and great. I just stopped right there, and I was like... I'm, I'm, I'm leveling up here. Let's, Let's go. go. That's Let's so go. cool. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, right and it does here. help. Teppin does help that I'm using a top tier team now. So it, yeah, it makes you gotta use a good deck. But in a card game, that you don't have that choice. So really. you have to use a good deck. Yeah, because everyone's like, "There's low tier heroes. You just can't care about winning." Right. <laughs> Whereas in fighting games, you can win even with low tiers. You know, you know, you can you can be the Fong player and get all yeah, the yeah, yeah so. a little more possible. Yeah, not great, but a little more possible. And all of my polls. On stream have been amazing. I keep getting legendaries right now, so because I every time I stream, I'm, I, I tell everybody come into my stream, watch me pull, so I can prove to you how bad my RNG is, so I don't pull because I never pull anything I good. See. Come in and you know prove me wrong, and so you can mock me and laugh at me, and then I pull all these legendaries in my stream chats like, oh look at your bad RNG. I'm like. Darn it, God, right, why did right. I have to pull that legendary? Right. Oh, you guys were right. So, you know, it's it's nice. been working, so nice work. Yeah. Things are things are going well, so I'm well, that's I'm great, happy man. Recently. I was really glad to hear. Yeah, I definitely jinxed it, it'll never happen again, but I've got all the no, cards I need. I mean you you can control at least some of what you were talking about in there. Yeah. I mean you're gonna win all the time, no, but in yeah. terms of like pacing yourself well yeah. and the taking chat, the little victories as important yeah. things, like, those are within your power. A lot because I there was definitely a couple of matches that I hundred percent should have won, and I just did the wrong play okay. because I didn't think about that I sure. could do certain Happens. things. And the chat's like, "You should have did this. You should have did this." And I was like, "Fuck! I never thought of that. Like Ooh. I just never thought of doing it that way." Ooh. You know, so they helped a lot and everything. That's like awesome. That. Shout out to Dark Void. I don't know. He's probably not watching. He's always in yeah. my tap and chat. I've seen him he's in there. Yeah. Helping, yeah, he's always helping me out. Very there, cool. So. Well, congrats, dude. That's great. 
<sighs> I mean, I don't know if it has to do with eating right and losing weight. Yeah, I have lost weight, but I've been kind of miserable even after losing weight for a while. But, you know. It might be like a confluence of things going on. Yeah, it's true. There was something. Something weird happened because then I also became, like, proactive about, like, finishing all this stuff. Like, I play King. I play King, which is a weird character to go with, to be honest with you, because he's actually one of the most comp... He's not one of the most complicated characters, but, like... Like, every time I play a king online, it's frustrating because they just gimmick the hell out of king. Because okay. king has the ability to gimmick you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because his move list, I think, is the longest in the game. Oh, is that so? He just has the most ridiculous amount of moves. And it's just because he has multi-throws and stuff right, like right. that and all these things. But he also just has a bunch of random mm -hmm. things. Like, some characters I go in the move list, it's like 50-some long. I'm like, oh, crazy. You go to king, you're like... One hundred. Really? Two hundred. Really? It's like two hundred and sixty or two hundred and fifty or something like that. It's That's like unreasonable. Crazy, but okay. yeah. As soon as I power, as soon as in Tekken five, when as soon as he started being able to power bomb people out of the air, I just wanted to use him. He's very cool. I just wanted to power bomb people. And also another thing in Virtual Fighter, I played Wolf, and I, I really played Wolf. I really well, it's because we were grapplers, I right? I wanted to do the the the, the swing, the giant, giant swing, swing yeah, right? Yeah. And King has the giant swing, so he had the giant swing, and he power bomb people out of the head yeah. air, and he has the head of a cat. Uh, he's I mean, super cool. Yeah, you're so not going to hear anything against that, that, that from me. So, yeah, super cool character. I did want to learn Julia, but Tekken. Is, oh God, it's so scary to learn new characters in Tekken yeah, when just, you're not. Yeah, good. learn one first. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'm just learning that character for now. So. Over the weekend, I was in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. for family reasons, and... Oh, and by the way, that King move list th is still missing, like, four moves that King has, too, that, like, aren't even on that list. That's Anyways, go ahead. The <laughs> hotel that we were, we're staying at just happened to be right next to a place called Cidercade. Mm-hmm, mm, -hmm, mm -hmm. Cidercade is a arcade slash cider house. So you go there and you buy alcoholic cider, which was really good. All the cider I had was awesome. And the games there were like, you know, ranging in age from late 70s, early 80s classic stuff up to pretty recent stuff. Mm -hmm. And like they, they even had like the cup, a Cuphead cabinet. Oh, dang. That's they cool. had a Wreck-It Ralph cabinet, like new stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, a bunch of uh, classic stuff too. So it was really cool. Spent a few hours in there. Playing and hanging out. We played Killer Queen for a little while. Oh, nice. You and your brothers. Uh, yeah, 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 we did. And uh, one guy beat us a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> like a stranger guy like, was beating the like three? Like one individual player, yeah, 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 yeah. human, was beating us like with the CPU, like mm -hmm, selling out, mm -hmm. uh, which was hilarious. Because it, it's, it's like a meetup for good players. And we yeah, ended up, we ended up yeah. chatting with a couple of them. Oh, and, cool. Okay, okay. Uh, it was really fun to just play and you know, I was like asking questions like I don't know. I know the maybe absolute basics about it. I played right, it once right, or twice right, ever. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Alright, so like what are the conditions for like my queen to swipe? Like it feels like the other swipers are hitting me first. Mm -hmm. like, what do I do? And he was like explaining to me the physics of like where the hitboxes uh, are. Okay, that's cool. Once I knew that stuff, then I got a lot better at trying to mm -hmm. hitting with the queen, right? Once mm -hmm. you understand. It was just a lot of a lot of cool stuff like that. Very fun game. Five player game? Is that what it Five is? Five player game. Five player game, okay. That crazy multiplayer. I've seen it at a couple of different yeah, arcades. It's yeah, it's super interesting. Uh, we were losing at one point, and my brother walked away from the cab. He salty rage quit? He rage quit IRL. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a couple of the guys, we were playing with uh, two of the good players who were on our team at the time, and they were even like, we could have won that game. Like, it was a doable game. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He just doesn't... He doesn't know enough about the game to even, like, know when you're right, actually yeah, losing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. That's awesome, dude. So even though we lost, I thought that was so funny. That's funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the, it'll be coming to console, but I believe in a 3v3 format rather than 5v5. Oh, okay, I okay. think they're changing it up a bit. Okay. Also, um, just so people know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, Indivisible is out. Yeah. Uh, Indivisible RPG created by uh, the Mike Z team that created uh, Skullgirls Lab Zero. Uh, it came out. You can play it now. 
I've been hearing great rave reviews about yes. it. I haven't. I've only played the demo a yeah, long same. time ago, and I remember when I was playing it, I kept talking to Mike. He was in my stream while okay. I was playing, it, and I was like, "Yeah, it'd be interesting if we could add, like, you could add things." He's like, "Already thought of that. Already okay. planning to. Okay. Already, okay. Let's go, Mike. you know." So, and I heard like the game like has mix-ups or something. Yeah, I heard like about that, that too. Like, yeah, it's like so. It's a Mike Z game, so it's gonna be probably pretty exciting. Yeah. So they have a great team there. You know, it's not yeah. just Mike. Obviously, yeah. he's important, but uh, they have a great team. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. A lot of the artists and stuff yes. like that are really strong artists out there. Definitely. And he was waiting for that review and it came out, which was, can you pet the dog and you can pet the dog in the game. So he nice. was happy about that. So He was like, this is the one review I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. It has an 80 out of 100 Metacritic score. Okay. It is pretty complicated, even from the demo that I played. So I think that there might be some people who might play it and just not quite get it. Okay. But I think for those who are willing to delve into it, my guess, based off of the demo, is that you will be able to appreciate that kind of game. I think it feels like it has a lot of depth into it. So. Well, I will definitely pick it up. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to wait for the Switch version. Yeah, good call, actually. But, uh, call. I will definitely play it. Because I get course. everything on the Switch now. Yeah, I mean, it's just... It's the best console. You pet the dog and attack with static charges. Genius. So petting the dog is actually part of the strategy. That's so. cool. So, so there is a Switch uh, version coming out, huh? Well, the second half were being too easy. People huh? have already beaten it, huh? Didn't it just come out like today? Dude, people beat games wow. fast, dude. Wow, what nerds. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's actually... Warrior Gut says it's very Valkyrie profile. That is exactly what Mike Z said during that beta. He's like, it's very much inspired by Valkyrie profile. So it's very much inspired by that, so... All right. Well, all right. I feel like we've gone long. I guess that's now. about it. All right. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, that's all. Yeah, let's bird our way out of here. Yep. Shall we? Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out. Again, if you guys enjoy this, please like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff there. Check and out fight for the five demands. Yep, five five demands, and just support Ultra Trend so we can do all sorts of cool things for you guys in the future. Peace out, everybody. We'll be back next week. <laughs>